Hello everyone and welcome. We are super pumped today. We've got Skeleton Crew, me and Steven coming around. We've been together since the beginning of Isolation 2020. If you're watching this back way later, it's 2020 and a little, uh, not little, a, a pandemic is happening for Corona. So, uh, you we've guys been, heard of this thing? Yeah, we, we've been streaming together since the beginning and uh, it's been crazy. This is week 14. Today we're featuring a game called The Flesh and Blood TCG. This is made by Legend Story Studio out of New Zealand. And this is a game we streamed several months ago. Um, and ultimately, uh, yesterday we announced uh, via email and social and whatnot that we were partnering with them. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. But uh, essentially, this is a game that, at first look, you know, a lot of companies will send us products to look at, and a lot of them don't make it on the camera. So the fact that it showed up on the camera in general months ago was a pretty good sign. But the game looks good. You can see some boxes in the background it here. It doesn't just look good. I, 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 would, I would be willing to say that this is the best looking game that I have seen yet. That's a, that's in my human life. In my what, what yeah. about your unhuman? <laughs> my human life, life is different. Uh, but. <laughs> but ultimately, the game looks good. The box presents good. The packs look good. The cards look good. Um, they they did a lot of things. Uh, really, it looks good. So then we played it. We played it on camera, and the system itself was really impressive. Um, it's, it's it was different. It was refreshing for me. It was different, but also uh, I'm seeing Skyter did the same thing for me, which is like, you can recognize when a system has been constructed well. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not, uh, we talk about this a lot on like the podcast and whatnot, but whether or not a game system is used well from the developers that develop the cards that go into that system is a different thing. Yeah. Uh, but the actual core system, and it has some similarities in terms of various values on the card and wrapping around, we'll dive into all that, I'm sure. But ultimately, the system itself presented a unique experience. You start with a hero in play. Let me, I'll give you a quick checklist on whether or not your system is tight and simple. Uh, is the is the word moribund in your rule book? And if <laughs> That's it a good is, old then... Thrones <laughs> reference right there. <laughs> then just go uh, home. Yeah, I mean, no, no moribund. Everything's clean. Everything's clear. Um, and it's it's a very obviously like cleanly designed game. So it looks good. It plays good. The next step for us, typically when we're looking at a game, uh, is talking to the publisher and kind of figuring out what their intent with the game is, where they come from, what their mission is as a company, how they operate, what their culture's like, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, back when we streamed, we started having a lot of conversations with Legend Story Studios and James, one of the founders. Um, just an incredible uh, story and, and, and great person and very friendly and awesome. And it's, it's clear I'm excited about this for a lot of reasons. One is, it, in this way specifically, it reminds me of Sky Tear, which is when we start talking about PvP geeks, it's that same feeling that like this is not a product first to them. And it's, it's something you don't really recognize because we, we grew up playing card games in the 90s and those games all felt the same. We've been doing throwbacks on Thursday, yeah, our yeah. Thur Thursday streams and you kind of feel it too where it's, they just, there's a certain moxie to it where they just are really genuinely trying to create uh, whatever it is that they want to create in this, this world, right? And uh, Salt with Sky Tear, seen it with Flesh and Blood where it's like it's clear there's a vision here. Yeah. And, and the, a passion. And right? a passion uh, for it. Wanting and, uh, to create something. Yeah. It, it, it shows through in the quality of the art, in the quality of the game, in the decisions that are being made, in the communications the company's making. So have a bunch of conversations and ultimately um, it all checks out, right? Super yeah. excited, I think. It really came together. It was a really we, cool process. We, uh, we we posted a blog and sent a newsletter with a little bit of that, but ultimately, um, you know, James, the, the founder, found Magic in the 90s growing up, kind of like we found the games that we found, joined a community, made a bunch of really good friends and incredible memories, eventually gets into the industry. Uh, and Works he, for Wizards and Hasbro. That's right. And later Hasbro, I guess they became kind of one in the same. Hasbro bought Hasbro Wizards. Hasbro Wizards, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So over New Zealand. But then ultimately set out um, roughly seven or eight years ago to make this game, right? And so has, a, from what I remember uh, hearing, it's like several years of cards uh, designed, and like they're obviously going through playtesting now and tweaking and stuff now that they have thousands of players playing across the country. But they're from New Zealand. That's another important component of this. Um, and the game is called Flesh and Blood specifically because it was designed to get people together in the flesh and blood. Like that's mm -hmm. literally where the name comes from. And so we see this where there's this emphasis on local stores, local communities wanting people to get together um, in light of games like Magic going more and more online and games like Hearthstone yeah, that Hearthstone are fundamentally really, online. really changed the dynamic and all the publishers are like, wait a minute, we can just publish digital cards? That's easier. <laughs> that seems easy. Well, yeah. So we saw Warhammer Champions kind of try to ride that line and didn't. And didn't. They, yeah. they <laughs> trampled on top of it. But ultimately, interestingly, right, we had the, the whole corona pandemic happening, which is a big part of the story. 
Um, and and when we were, it's so similar for me for PvP geeks with Sky Terror and now Flesh and Blood, where you have these companies who are genuinely in, genuinely interested in physical across the table local level play for these games, and then we have a pandemic comes that shuts down most of that. That's horrible. Um, that's incredibly challenging. Like Flesh and Blood had a set come out the week before Isolation hit, <laughs> uh, which for a collectible card game um, is just devastating, honestly. Um, a collectible card game needs a lot more people playing a game and buying products. Um, and a collectible card game, one of the biggest advantages to it, we're probably going to talk a lot, a lot about this on this week's podcast if you're interested in this topic, but there's a lot, a lot of pluses and minuses for a collectible card game. In my mind, one of the biggest pluses is sealed and draft play. Yeah. And when you can't go to your local store and you can't have organized play programs and you can't have big gatherings of tournaments and stuff, um, a lot of those uh, positives kind of get go away, right? It's very difficult. Yeah, so it's super tough. In talking with uh, Legend Story, ultimately where we come in, where we enter stage left or right, depending on which way you're looking at the camera, <laughs> is uh, you know ultimately looking at helping them. Uh, the, they're from New Zealand, so they don't they don't have a huge presence in the United States. There's a lot of a lot of areas, a lot of players that don't have a local store that's carrying this or products to get it from. And this game has been hard to get a hold of. So um, as kind of a central source and a place for people to have easy access to this game who maybe don't have stores that are either open because of COVID or just stores that are supporting this game in general because it's not Magic or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and it's just a great game that deserves to be talked about. Yeah, and we really just want to introduce it to you guys because uh, you know I hadn't really heard about it, and, and I'm sitting here in what should be the nexus of information about this hobby, and I, I didn't know anything about it until we got booster boxes showed up on our front door. So a lot of you probably don't know that this is happening, and that becomes harder and harder as the more noise in the industry. So we're trying to find those gems that we can pull out and present to you and say, maybe you would like this. It's definitely going to be well done, whatever it is that we're going to show you. Uh, whether or not it's your thing is totally up to you, as you, you might expect. So here's what you should know about the series that we're doing here. And we kind of are refining this based on how we handled Sky Tear whenever that one launched. Uh, basically, we, we want to just show you the exploration of the game. So Zach and I are going to be exploring this game just like we do as players, just like we've done for the past 20 plus years of our lives together. <laughs> uh, we're gonna crack open cards, we're gonna learn mechanics, we're gonna have questions, we're going to maybe draft some stuff, sealed deck building, that kind of thing. Hopefully slowly gain a level of understanding and maybe sub mastery, I won't say mastery uh, because that's a that's an incredible word that we could pursue for the rest of our lives, but have a level of confidence that what we're doing is decent and at least appropriate. And then at the end of that exploration phase, we'll do a proper like how to play or learning style video where we actually feel like we can speak confidently about what a new player should know and how the game functions. Uh, so you're going to be watching the entire discovery process as we go through it. And uh, we're going to share that with you and we're going to answer questions along the way. Chat, you guys are awesome. I want to, all of you that are here on the stream right now, you guys are phenomenal. I've seen a lot of great conversation going on in the chat. A lot of good questions. We're happy to answer those as we go along. So I'll try to keep my eye on the chat, as Zach will as well, as we go. And uh, then we'll we'll kick it off, and we'll have a great time with this one. And so, I think one of the things I'm most interested in, because collectible is a big conversation. Like I said, I think we'll talk about this on the podcast this week. But <laughs> Artemis the, Jeff, you're right. The the recognition of any time collectible. We saw this with Destiny. We, we took a long break from collectible games from like 2011-ish, when Monster Apocalypse died. Until, I forgot that was collectible. Until, yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Until 2018 or 17 when Destiny came out. I think it was tail end of 2017. Spoils was really the last one that I consider, like, oh, this is my TCG era. That, yeah, a card game. Because, like, like Monpog was, like, weird. It was like, ah. Uh... Yeah, but we took a long break, and then we came back with Destiny. And then at the time, we had been uh, playing and supporting a lot of games that were collectible. So a ton of people were like, nah, collectibles aren't for me. Um, and I, it, it was interesting because coming from a TCG background as a kid, um, I grew up and it was just like, we didn't even think about owning everything. You just don't own everything. Yeah, so like the LCG <laughs> player's typical don't. complaint is like, it costs so much money to get everything. Mm -hmm. um, and when I'm playing a TCG, that's not even like, where I start now, Destiny, they actually designed in a way, it was kind of like a TCG Lite. Destiny was a collectible game that didn't want to be a collectible game. It did I mean, not they didn't to lean it. into the collectability at all, so you kind of didn't have either player being satisfied. It's like the people who wanted to buy it and have everything still had to go through the collectible crucible a little bit, and the people who wanted a pack to always have value, by the time they had their legendaries, it was worthless, right? Yeah. Um, and then they also put dice in there, so that makes the whole collectible model very difficult because now you have a ton of weight and you got to deal with pricing and all that. So 
it kind of didn't quite hit where it needed to. <laughs> yeah, and my, beyond any number of other mistakes. In that my we made. Opinion, but yeah. all that said, I, what I'm excited to do, we're starting here. There are these four character starter decks that, that came out. So this is a worth showing. Uh, and th this is another thing that made me immediately recognize they they knew what they were doing. Uh, but there are these four decks that are pre-built, ready to play, mm -hmm. easy to do. So we're going to start by playing with these. And then what you can actually do, I didn't know this till today, actually. Oh, hello. Uh, Stream surprise. You can play sealed by just opening six packs, I believe is what you said. Like, that's yes. sealed? Yep. So after we play a couple games with the starters, we're looking to open some packs, see what the packs look like and feel like, play a couple sealed and see what that feels like. And then throughout these streams that we're going to be doing, because we're going to be doing a stream today, we're doing streams next week, and we're going to keep going. Um, we're basically going to keep scaling up how much product we have, because what I want to know is, like, what does it look like to play Flesh and Blood with starters? What does it look like to just draft, draft and seal it? What does it look like when we have, like, a box of each set, two boxes of each set? Just so we, and also anyone watching who's interested, can understand, basically, the kind of gameplay you can expect at various levels. Um, a lot of it is like with a collectible game, once you get a box or two into a set, you're going to have all the commons and uncommons. And then at that point, it's a rare slash legendary style game. And their, their whole rarity scheme uh, was, is, is they're playing into collectibility. I'll say that yeah. much. Um, which I'm, ex as someone who like squealed when he opened Charizard See, you as a kid. you love the, you and I are, are somewhat different in that. Because yeah. you, you actively are like, I'm excited about the idea that I could get like a super rare card in this pack. I recognize the strength of that because you can give packs out as prize support and whatnot, and they have value to every single player, especially if a secondary market is strong. Well, and if, if collectability is there, even if I get stuff I already have, at least now I have trade stuff. You can trade, yeah. And like, we grew up in that atmosphere yeah. environment, right? Um, and it is worth noting. I mean, so you, there's a lot of good arguments for and against collectability and kind of how to feel about that. And it might not be the right uh, call for you. I don't know if I were just a you know normal person walking into Covenant. I don't know if I would choose this game simply because of the collectability. I'd think, I don't know if I want to spend that much money. Uh, but all that said, it's worth noting that, like, the competitive games that are not collectible are have never really found a footing. Um, you know, there's some examples to the contrary, but you look at all the competitive LCGs that kind of rose and fell. You look at even across history, like some of the uh, more board game style competitive games uh, that just don't really take hold. And so, you know, the only ones that have succeeded have been the Magic Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon off of the, you know, as you'd expect collectible model that's very kind of defined now. So there's there's something about this that uh, that is beyond the simple kind of mathematics of how much money does it cost to get everything. Yeah, and I think the the recognition for me will go in deep on the podcast tomorrow. I'm yeah, let's do it. I'll uh, save my thoughts for yeah, that. Yeah, but ultimately, I think the the macroeconomics of collectible for the entire industry. There's a reason Magic blew the industry up like it did, um, and I get it. It's it's cost prohibitive. That's why I want to show show not tell. I can tell you it's you know you can play with only one box all I want. Uh, but until we actually do it, until we show you what that looks like, it's it's hard to appreciate. So we'll be doing it. If you're hesitant, t hang 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 in there. You'll see if you like the way the game plays at all. Uh, if it's worth anything. A few things worth saying though. We we do have an Ira demo promotional deck. You can you can get two of those and they play against each other, so you can kind of try the game. We're offering those for free. We started offering those yesterday, and they're already gone. Yeah, uh, so, yeah so that's wonderful. Incredible. A ton of people sign up on that wait list. I'm going to link in a second. You can find it there. You can sign up to, to be on the wait list for that. You'll be emailed as soon as we get more. Could be as soon as like the next day or so, but uh, with the 4th on, on fri Friday shutting down shipping, there's some question marks. So uh, we're going to have those as soon as we can, and that's a really great way just to try it for free. You can get a feel for the game. They're meant to, they were built to literally be played against each other. Yeah, just get two of those Ira decks and play them against each other. Yeah, and then that's a step idea. up from that is going to be uh, the, the four hero decks that are in a single pack together. Um, I think that's four literally playable decks. You could never buy anything else again if you if you like the system and don't want to do the collectible thing. But then we'll literally be showing you what comes in booster packs, what what you're gonna feel like after you have a box, and so on and so forth. And you can go from there. And I, you know, if collectible is not your thing, I totally understand. Yeah, no but stick no around and watch, uh, see some gameplay because there's some cool design elements happening in this that are worth exploring uh, just for the the sake of understanding game design. List it. Good point. I the LCGs that I'm talking about are the competitive ones, not the cooperative. So like Arkham and Marvel. Champion is totally different ball game uh, than this, but the co cooperative LCGs are like that's just where it's at. That that to me well, is the whole format is built around a cooperative. Yeah, I, I think LCGs being cooperative is is exactly what they need to be. Um, you see it with even like Lord of the Rings, which has been going on for like a decade. Yeah, um, you but can, you can rock that. Yeah, but if you look at the the competitive LCGs, every single one of them, even the one based in the, the Mythos universe, mm -hmm. right, it went away. 
uh, yeah. and for good reason. Like uh, we talk about that a lot uh, in general, but uh, definitely for good reason. Now, could it be done well? I think I think you could. I there, do too. It, there's a there's, there's that perfect lap out there, right? That it's <laughs> conceivable that, that you could solve the entry level problem, the bloat problem, the cycling problem, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it just so happens that uh, it hasn't hasn't been solved yet. Okay, Zach, do you want to dive into this thing? Yeah, let's can do I, it. Can I give you so like yeah, I've you're, been, you're the you're the guide here. I've been watching. Let's let's just zoom in here. Um, let's hit the board. This is our so a lot of questions about these play mats. Um, I I don't really know. Do you have any idea the like the play mats like how to get them where they're from? So the, we, sh we should reach out and just see if we can we can provide those play mats because everybody actually, wants them. We talked about that okay. uh, when I was talking with James. I, we'll reach back out. But these are essentially I think from the organized play kits. Okay. Um, they sent them to us with our initial stuff way back. Um, and they're not easy to come by. So that's definitely something we'll look into. Uh, there's also a question, uh, Wizard of the Climbs Library saying, will Arcane Rising be available alone? I assume right now they're bundled up together, yeah. and at some point we would offer that separately. We have a promotion going on. It's one box of set one, one box of set two, and then it comes with, you'll see, I have it set up here. I'm playing Bravo Showstopper. Uh, he's, I, I call him Gaston. So if you hear me singing <laughs> Gaston's no song, then one. you'll know why. Uh, but his, his hammer here is Anothos, and this is, I don't know if you can tell, this is hard to pick up on. Hi, Ian. What's up? On Facebook. Uh, Good to but see you. It's, a, it's called cold foiling. They do this really cool technique, and it's, it's hard to even explain in person. I think there's a video somewhere on the, the website about this. Um, but the, the booster box bundle that we have is set one, set two, one of each. And then each bundle comes with two of the random weapons. And there's eight different weapons because there's eight characters in the first two sets. They are gorgeous in um, person. But yeah, I, it's they, been so long since I've seen like fancy foil stuff. You yeah. know, it's like really. I can't. You can't tell. Honestly, can't thi tell. this is one of the. This is actually one of the things that makes the physical version of a card game a good argument over just a digital version. Because right, digital versions have a ton of advantages if you're just dealing with technical rule sets that need to resolve a certain way. I played a ton of Netrunner on Jinteki. It was a good experience. Like I, I had a great time with it. There weren't all these rules questions. Everything functioned very nice. Um, and you don't get the full, and so what you have to understand is the full art experience of seeing these things on the table is notable. It's really important. And then when you have foil cards and weird shiny things going on, it just makes the experience in person so much more alive than you would get digitally. Uh, Absolutely which agree. I think is a really important thing. Uh, so I want to show off, check this out. So I'm going to show off. Teach me. What's in this deck? Now, we've got, when you get a hero deck, uh, you get two versions of the hero. You get the full health version down here in the bottom right what, corner. We're looking at Reinar uh, Reckless Rampage. This is the main hero. So this is Reinar. And then you have a young version that is designed for draft or sealed play and also for beginner games because it's basically half health. So you can play pretty quickly and kind of get a feel for the game. So Zach, I'm going to recommend we use the young versions of the characters and only start at 20 health. But Bravo Showstopper has games. such a better beard. Yeah, it's way better. You can just start at 20 and just, just leave him in I'm there. I'm kidding. I'm okay with that. I, I'll, dude, I'm going to go through the whole experience you got to play here. what you love to look at, you know what I mean? Then every hero comes with a weapon, and uh, it tells you the class that, that can use that weapon. This is a brute weapon called Romping Club that I'm looking at. So I see that Reinar here on the bottom is a brute hero. So brute heroes can use brute weapons. And it tells you if it's two-handed or one-handed. So Zach and I are both using big clubs. Not intentional, but it happened. Where do you see the two-handed or one-handed? Uh, down here. It has a little in the parentheses. 2H oh, down there, 2H so technically, you. oh, you could have someone with two. Yeah, like the harmonized Kodachi, you can oh, have two of those, yeah. Goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you have four pieces of equipment. This is maybe one of the simplest but most fun parts of this game for me. I love it. See, already, it, it, you're you, setting the tone, man. Well, you look into it and you're like, wait a minute, this is very different from what I'm used to with a collectible game, right? Like, normally I start out and I draw my opening hand and then I play a resource and then I play some things out, and then I play a resource and then I play stronger things out, and then I play a resource and some more things are out. And then sometimes if I play like seven resources, I can play a game winning thing that you couldn't do anything about, right? Mm -hmm. Like that old, that old uh, 
whatever that would be. But you start with all this armor in play. Start with everything in play. And this is also a really cool way to differentiate maybe how you might want to build a deck in the future, right? I don't know how much it's utilized now in the first two sets, but if we look at a few sets from now, maybe my Reinar deck runs a different helmet than your Reinar deck, and that's yeah. a pretty cool thing, and we don't have to draw it to and draw this And just conceptually, you know, like when you're leaning, so this is definitely a fantasy setting, right? It reminds me of like a cleaner, uh, more modernly designed uh, magic setting, right? It, sure. It's, it's not as, I, it, magic's got its own thing going on, but this, this is definitely fantasy. But the idea of like me rolling up this Bravo character, the young version, and then like I get to choose my helmet, my armor, my weapon, my all this stuff, it's super cool. And if we end up mirror matching, it's like, I, you know, right now I have the helm of Aizen's Peak. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you might have who knows which helmet from which era. Um, and we might have different weapons. And I think it's it'll like, make for some fun deck building. It's just cool. Like, and again, we don't know the development of the game. I don't know what kind of content they're going to put out, but the potential to have seven different builds just based on the equipment that you bring with this yeah. ID, is that's where I get really excited about it. And then we have all of our cards, just cards in the deck. So let's pull up a card real quick and just look at it. Look up Breakneck Battery here. That's the red version, too. It's worth saying. That is the red version, yes, and that's really important. So we're going to have to say the colors so we make sure that we can pop up the right cards on the screen. So, you know, in traditional play, you probably don't have to say red Breakneck Battery. Uh, but for us, it's a way for us to differentiate because there's up to three different versions of the same card, and they are considered different versions of that card. So the red Breakneck Battery provides... Uh, one resource, it costs two, and it does six damage, and then you can play it as a defense card. This is kind of like shields in Warhammer Conquest to block three damage. So like the top left value here is the resources. It's got one pip, mm -hmm. so it could technically it looks like it has three slots for pips there. And then what did you say this top right? That's the actual cost of the card. So that's how much it costs to play. Yes. So like yeah, I, you yeah. could discard two, two pips worth uh, inherently, or we'll get to that I think in the pitch value to do that, and then if you're playing it as an attack, I would expect it to do six damage. Right on. And if yep. you're playing it to block, I would expect it to do three. That's right. So this card, it has four values in, in all the corners. That's what reminds me of Sky Terror. It does remind you of Sky Terror. It reminds me of Warhammer Champions a little bit, only yep. because there's everything in the corners. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Star Wars LCG, where you have an edge value, and you also have a cost, and you have the effect as well. So designers have been really exploring this idea of how much decision making can we bake into a single card in your deck where it's like, maybe I want to hold this, I want to play it, but I also want to hold it back for defense, but I also could spend it as a resource. So it should allow you to have hands that can break out into a bunch of different decision trees for how you want to make that hand the most productive. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to be looking for as we explore the game, is like, how much is that actually happening versus, oh, it's a three resource card, I always pitch that card, right? Yeah. So this is the crazy thing, Breakneck Battery. Let me see if I actually have another um, version of this in the deck. Because this is one of the most interesting things. So like if you have, this is Breakneck Battery. I can go ahead and say Breakneck Battery, the yellow version, and that'll pop up. Assuming it exists in the yeah, game. Yeah, assuming it exists. Which, Which it might not. I, I'm just going to guess it does. But basically the same named card, they have a different color associated with it. And so the resource cost might be different. The resources mm -hmm. it provides might be different. The effect itself might be a little different. But they're going to be loosely the same thing. Um, and I think that's a really cool way. We've seen this uh, sort of in Sky Terror, where that, they won't be the same name, but it's like a faction will have a one cost plus two modifier card that does a similar thing, but it does it in a way that you would expect that faction to do it. Um, yep. So I like this, where you just have more granularity in the type of cards. And I think this opens the door. This is what I mean by a tightly designed system. It allows them to balance and create new cards that can just basically be a little bit different, and maybe you know you don't have set one, so you're not running a specific version of a card, but you can still accomplish it, whatever you're trying to accomplish in like a, a parallel sort of way. Let's check out an example of this. So let's look at Red Savage Swing. So Red Savage Swing costs one, generates one resource, blocks for three, does seven damage, and as an additional cost to play it, you discard a random card. Now, if we look at the upgraded version of this, and I don't want to say upgraded because it's not better. So look at yellow Savage Swing in comparison. So what you trade is, this version does six damage instead of seven. So it does one less damage, but it generates two resources instead of one. So this is a slightly better resource generating card at the expense of doing less damage if you play it. And this is the strongest version. The red versions are going to be the strongest version of the effects, but they're always going to generate the least amount of resources. Which is cool. Is there a third color? It's so cool. Yes, blue, I believe, is the, okay. is the final color. So red being, we could expect red to be a little more offensive. 
Maybe red is blue the best is the version. least offensive. Yes. And then ye the yellow is the mixture. It's in the it's middle. middle. Now, as, as somebody who just conceptually is a deck builder, if you just think about that, it's, it's, it's so insane to me that the choices you're going to have to make during deck building. And like, do you need I more can resources run, or do you need more damage? I can run three red Savage Swing and three yellow Savage Swing. And if there's a blue one, I can run three blue Savage Swing. So it could swing. be a lot of Savage Swinging. So I could like super maximize my deck around one effect, but it's huh. going to be varying degrees of potency based yeah. on the cards that I draw. Now, other things I could do is I could start with the red version of Savage Swing as my three of slot. And then let's say I go throughout the game and I'm like, man, I just am not having quite enough resources. I'm going to upgrade this to the yellow version so I get extra money at the expense of one damage. How cool is that? It's so good. Yeah, I like that right? a lot. Again, potential, potential, potential. And when you're building a deck, it's 60 cards as standard. But here's the cool thing. When you're at a tournament, when you're competing, you register 80 cards. Your opponent and you each reveal the heroes that you're playing. And then you get to choose the 60 cards. So if I see that Zach's playing a wizard, I can go get my anti-wizard gear and, and robe up, you know, and get my, uh, my magic missile defense on. Uh, and if you're playing somebody who's going to be hitting really hard, maybe I want to do like dodge equipment sure. set or take these out and put these in. So there's kind of a natural sideboarding mechanic that goes on at the start of every game, which again is going to allow you to maximize your matchup and not have to be like, well, I got to include this silver bullet, but it's only useful in 5% of games. Yeah. Like I had to do a net run all the time, right? All the it's time. like, well, if they're running the current deck, yeah. then I got to run these cards, which I don't well, like. Well, and you also think about like even having different versions of the same card in your extra stack, right? Where it's like, Maybe I need more resources because I'm going to have a high cost answer to a certain character, but I don't need those resources if I'm not playing that answer. So right. like, it's a packet of seven cards I bring in. And that's where it also reminds me of Sky Terran. Yeah, that way, you got to look at the where matchups. Where it's like and... you're looking at the matchup and the win conditions, and you're basically like choosing certain stuff to bring in. If that choke deck comes along that denies you resources, like, well, I got to put my up. threes in. Yeah. yeah, let's go. So this is this is cool, and Zach and I are truly jacked for this. We're very excited about it. So. Um, I say we just start playing. Yep. The system itself is really clean. And so I'm going to let you go first to cool. show me how a turn works, but then we're going to just dive in. Well, I've seen some people um, asking about, talking about uh, the people idea. People were talking. People were talking, man. Um, and I got a Quicken token here that I'll... Uh, basically talking about, like, I don't know, it seems like it's just kind of um, you, you try to ping one and two damage here and there until you eventually win. And for some people, that's crazy exciting. Like for me, I've been, waiting, I've been waiting for a game that is strictly incremental advantage over time that doesn't have that weird, you know, deck that, you know, you've been making all the best trades the entire game, but then they put those seven com combo cards together and all of a sudden you're locked out and you're playing against a Martell deck and you lose. But you know I'm going to be looking for those big trades. Combo is not necessarily my thing, but I like the ability to, you know, throw the long ball and get 15 damage on you. Now, there is the potential for that here, and here's what I like about it is there are like these potions and things that stay on the board and provide an aura that you can then essentially drink or pop or whatever. And then you get an effect that is a longer, like an immediate like boost. But the great thing about that is you have to sacrifice your incremental advantage to build for the future. So as you're playing these potions out, I get to just wail on you. And so if you can build a board state over time with the pressure that I'm putting on, uh, then yeah, you deserve to be rewarded for that. And you can have your big turn and, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I've watched as many games as I can online and I have been very impressed, not by like the level three mastery of this game, where it's like one is, yeah, I understand the basic resources and, and making the right trades. Two is I understand the cards I should be pitching and I understand to keep my arsenal full. Three is I understand that the cards that I'm pitching are going to get shuffled underneath my deck and they're going to become my draw deck at the end of the game. So I know the order of cards and the cards that I want to be pitching early so that I see them in the late game to seal the deal. And Finish I feel like off. stage four is understanding all of that and then understanding what your opponent's pitching. So you got to start seeing what their late game looks yeah, like. So, so and we'll, we'll get to that resource right. mechanic in a second. I think that's, again, a, another super interesting uh, level of this game. You have, you have a lot of health over there. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I need to lower Math, it. Math, how does that work? All right, so <laughs> how many cards do I draw? Uh, so you have your little intellect stat there at the bottom. Okay, yeah. so Bra young Bravo has an intellect of four, and so I'm going to draw four. everyone we've seen is probably four. There, there's a wizard in Arcane Rising. If anyone's going to have a higher intellect, it's probably the wizard uh, because, you know, you max your stat as a wizard in intelligence, unless you're me, and then you put it in strength. You try to have a weird game. 
I like this. Matthew saying, uh, he, the, "Did I do that?" The chat knows us. I didn't do that. Not yet. I will though, Matthew. I will do that. I will get my cards wrong, but you know, then's the beat. So far, so good. What's this quicken doing? Is that supposed to be in your deck? That's just a token, right? So it's a generic token. Um, and whenever a card brings in something that says "bring in a quicken token," then you can put this into into play. And then it says, "When you play an attack, you can go again." So excellent. All right. Let me draw my four cards, and then we'll get going. Van asking if we can explain the token cards. We, we kind of just did, but we also will get to it when it actually occurs in the gameplay. That's right. Yeah, the tokens are basically just there to like give, uh, give some presence to an aura or a status that's going on. It just really is to help you understand uh, the status of the game. Um, kind of like uh, Micro Majig tokens in Spoils. What else? What else has used tokens in the past? Uh, did Destiny have any tokens that you brought in from, from nowhere? It didn't, did it? Mm, not like that. No? OK, so now we take the first turn. And here's the basics of a turn. First of all, anything that I get an action point, one action point. Now Your turn is one action point. When you say action point, you make it sound like, oh, I should be tracking that, like in Netrunner with click trackers. But the reality is you basically just do one thing every turn. Sometimes you're able to refresh that ability to do something, so you can do something twice. Like when you have Go times. Again? Go Again does that. It doesn't gain you action points aside from the one that it's refreshing. And that's something that I didn't fully appreciate early on when I was learning about the game, is that if I play seven Go Again cards in a row, I don't get seven action points. Go Again only means that once Go Again resolves, I refresh that one action point I already have. And there are some things like those potions that can give you additional action points in the turn, and that's when your turns can get insane. But otherwise, it's generally a game of play one action. It's generally an attack action. We go back and forth with reactions and stack on top of that, as you would expect. All of that stuff resolves. You either take damage or you don't. Resources go back under your deck. Anything that was used goes to your graveyard. And then it goes to your turn. And then you attack me. And then it goes to my turn, and I attack you. One of the key considerations of this game is because everything typically can be used to defend against my attacks, if you spend your turn defending against me, you don't get to redraw before it's your turn to, to play offense. So the more you defend, the less offense you can generate for the next turn. Super cool balance. So that's kind of the balance that we're having to have. So really understanding the trade there is the critical part of the game. Yep, 100%. So let's look at, I'm just going to do a rundown real quick of the uh, weapon that I have. This is the Romping okay. Club. Yep. And it says, once per turn, I can spend two resources to attack. So it becomes an attack action, and I can slide it up there to basically put it on the okay. chain. And this is the combat chain. When you're mm -hmm. going, it'll be this way to this way. When I'm going, this way to this way. That way to that way. That's right. And then I also have a once per turn effect. When I discard a card with six or more attack, Romping Club gains plus one until end of turn. OK, so Romping Club has a four attack on the bottom left there. And That's right. if you discard a card from your hand for some reason, mm -hmm. any number of abilities that might trigger that, it's going to get plus one each time. That's correct. OK. And then Ryan R himself says, when you discard a card with six or more uh, attack during your action phase, you gain Intimidate. Um, and that means target hero banishes face down a random card from their hand. At the beginning of the end phase, return all cards banished this way to their owner's hand. Hmm. So it basically takes a card out of your hand for the defense, and then you get it back. At nice. This what it looks like to But me. if I was saving a defense card, then that could be bad. That could be problematic. Uh, then we've got our equipment. So equipment is generally providing defense. If we look at something like Iron Rot Helm, for instance, we can pull this up. It's pretty generic equipment. Um, it's just one defense. That's all this is doing. And I can slide this in as I would a defense card from my hand. It has this ability called Blade Break. When you defend with it, after the chain closes, it goes away. So it's basically just a one defense at some point. Yeah, just like a bicycle helmet. Uh, answer a quick question here. Steven T says, any word on UK releases for Flesh and Blood? Quite interesting grabbing it, but customer custom charges, you know. Uh, something we're actively looking into across the board, so we're moving as fast as we can on that front. Uh, but ultimately, right now, not a great answer. Um, but we'll get there. Yeah, and uh, good point here on, uh, I don't know who asked this, Kaya. Uh, yeah, so the full like Reinar version definitely has armor and club in tow, uh, so they are represented in the uh, in the actual game. Yeah, then the Iron Rot Gauntlet is very similar. If you'll if you'll notice, Iron Rot basically means defend for one and break it at the end mm. Uh, mm -hmm. because it's just not great. That's cool. Then we have the Bark Bone Strapping for Reinar here. 
But there's an instant ability here. Destroy it, roll a six-sided die, and gain resources equal to half the number rounded down. Okay, so, so it's a at gambit. Least, at least one. At least one. Maybe three. Maybe three. And then Battle Warn, if you defend with it, you put a minus one counter on it when the combat chain closes. So you can defend with it and then still later on use its ability to destroy it and get the uh, extra resources. Very cool. And then finally, the Snapdragon Scalers. This is the best piece of equipment that Reinar has found, for sure. Look at how beautiful these Look are. At those. Look at those boots, dude. Just gorgeous. They were made for walking. Right? Those boots were made for firing. Uh, it says attack reaction, destroy Snapdragon Scalers, target attack action card with cost resource one or less, gains go again. So, so you can destroy it, target an action card that you've played with cost one or less, and then it gains go again. Very cool. So you get to, like, you know, chain Kinda out some attacks. Chain out. Yeah. You want me to run mine down real quick? Yeah, just please so we do. have a, a plan. So Bravo, the young version, uh, has an action for two resources until the end of the turn. My attack actions with cost three or greater gain dominate, go again. Uh, I don't know. Look up I, don't, I don't know what dominate does, but go, go again, sweet. So I can spend two, and then until the end of the turn, my three cost actions gain dominate. So here's what's cool. I like in the glossary here, and I've got my nice little uh, hero's handbook, which I, I'm a huge fan of reading about things so that I can explain them to Zach uh, on camera. It says, an attack that is difficult to defend as the lead. So it's like it gives you the flavor of what this is supposed to be doing. The defending hero can't defend an attack with dominate with more than one card from their hand. Equipment and defense reaction cards played from arsenal are a useful way to get around dominate. Mm. Isn't that cool? So it's like yeah. a little tooltip. I feel like yeah. I'm playing uh, Baldur's Gate that's, or something, that's and really I'm learning nice. how to operate the game. So basically, I can spend two to give all my expensive attacks go again and also dominate, which makes them hard to, to defend against. Bravo. You Bravo get it? Like indeed. you're going to yeah. like, ah, check and this out. And his hammer, Anothos, uh, once per turn action, I can spend three to do the attack. So it makes sense. So he can spend two. He gives his own hammer attack go mm -hmm. again, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you have two or more cards in your pitch, which is how you generate resources in a minute, um, with cost three or greater, it gains plus two attack. So if I have like six resources hidden here because there were two threes. So he wants to run a lot of expensive cards. It feels like he's all about the big swings. Which makes sense. Yeah. No one, no one cracks hammer hammers and like Gaston. Gaston. Yeah, yeah, come of on. Course. He, so yeah. And then uh, he's got the Helm of Aizen's Peak. Action, spend a resource, destroy Helm of Aizen's Peak. My hero gains plus one uh, intellect until the end of turn. Battle Warrant, if I defend with it, uh, put a minus one counter on it. So it's basically a once minus one. Then later I can destroy it to gain a plus one hand size for a turn. Oh, very nice. So you get so plus one. So he wants one. the big yeah. hand, big show. Yeah. Uh, Goliath Gauntlet, which looks crazy. Uh, action, destroy it. The next attack action card would cost two or greater. You play this turn, gains plus two attack and go again. He's going to have a big turn. Like yeah, a, yeah, you're going to be building to the big turns. Iron Rot Plate, of course, it's a destroy it and get one defense once. Iron Rot Legs, same thing. Right. So. Okay, so you've got bad boots and bad plates. But a good helmet. And I've got good boots and good uh, chest armor, if you will, and then we, we swapped. So you've got the cool top side and I've got the cool bottom side. Yeah. All right. I'm going to set my health appropriately to 20. And Zach, in your learning uh, method... Okay, so Bravo doesn't give the attack go again. He gives it dominate. But then that action is go again. Oh, there's a period, yeah. yeah. Go again. So Periods matter. We're just going to start swinging. We were and, swinging. And we're going we're gonna to do it poorly, and we're not going to have any idea of how we should really be operating this. Um, and if you're familiar with the game and in chat, feel free to shout it out if we're doing something. Uh, chat has been incredible throughout all these streams. All right, so let's look. I've got a bunch of these cards in here. I've got three of the same one. And so the base flow of the turn, right, walking through this, you can pitch a card to your pitch here. Like I have this Blessing of Deliverance blue, mm -hmm. and it's got three resource pips. Yep. So if it were my turn, now I have three resources I can spend. That's right. And I could technically do it again and again, but I only have four cards in hand. And it, it technically works like Marvel Champions, where you play a card, you check to see if there's enough resources from previous pitches. If not, you, get a, you pitch cards immediately to pay for it. So play the thing you want to play, then pitch to generate the resources to make it happen. Any resources that aren't used on the current play stay in the game. And so then your next play, you can pull from what's existing. And if you need more, you can pitch another card. Nice. So you can keep going essentially forever. And then the you also have the ability to put a card face down your arsenal here, yep. which takes it out of hand, but you can use it on defense later. Here's the thing. So if you consider the arsenal, the arsenal exists as kind of an extra card in your hand on, on future mm -hmm. turns but you can't use it for the two framework things that a card often wants to do. You can't use it as pitch resources, and you can't use it for its little shield defense in the bottom right. 
what you can use it for is attack reactions, defense reactions, and actions themselves. So it would be like playing it from your hand, except it can't generate resources and it can't block. Got you. But it can be a def defense reaction. So that's and a distinction to make. Clear. Any, what do you mean by defense reaction? Does it need to say that? It will say it on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, on the very bottom. Okay, so now Steven gets to think about things. So I've got a Rompton Club. I can pay two to attack with it, and that would be my action for the turn. Uh, I've got Reinar, so I could, I could get Intimidate with it if I find a way to discard a card, of which I have cards that tell me to do that. So I like that that's I'm, possible. I think someone in chat was saying that after your, the first player's first turn, both players draw back up to their maximum hand size. That's the only exception. The first, yeah. and, and it makes sense, right? Because if I'm basically beating you down and you have to defend from the very beginning, you start with a very low hand size, and then you try yeah, to recover, tempo but you can't, might never and then recover. I'm back in. Yeah, yeah, so you can basically just go uh, full on with your defense early on. All right, let's just play a card and see what it looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Savage Swing. It's a brute action. This it's is the red version. Action. Yep, this is the red version, red Savage Swing. So I need to generate one resource in order to do this. And you see that that pip in the top left. Uh, or no, the top right is the one cost. It says a one. That's right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to generate cost. So let's generate two here. And it's got, this is the yellow Savage Swing that I'm pitching. So it's generating essentially two resources here. One of them immediately gets consumed by Savage Swing, so this card is now officially paid. Now I look at additional costs to play it. Yep. And it says I got to discard a random card. So I'm going to discard. Isn't it random? <laughs> do you want to play something else? Nope. Oh, a Barraging Beatdown. So that is a really blue Barraging Beatdown. Looks great. Your next Brute attack this turn gains. If this attack is defended by less than two non-equipment cards, it gains plus two, and it also gains Intimidate, and it's also go again. Now, could you technically, can you generate resources even if no. you don't need to do that yet? No. Got you. So like, if you had a card you wanted in Arsenal, you could have done that first. No. That's Arsenal only at the end? only go at the very end of your okay. turn. It's an uninterruptible framework. We learn in. Sacred uh, action. OK, so Savage Swing is coming in. It's going to do seven damage to you. And then the first thing that happens is you declare any defensive cards that you would uh, use to, de to basically defend this number. Now, it can be any number of cards. You can play all four if you want to. They are going to add up and be cumulative. You can also throw in any armor that you have that would reduce that number further. Whew. All right. Bear with me. That seems good. What's the... Oh, health. That's health. That's your health. That's right. All right. All right. Well, a defense seems good because I'll get a drawback up. So you're you hitting will for... get it Early on, I think defense for the first turn is really important. So you're hitting yeah. for seven. And then what's the framework? Can you tell me the framework? You play yeah. You pay the resources. So I declare the action and do all of that. Then you declare defense in, in whatever way you want. Then it's attack reactions, defense reactions, just as we would do it in Sky Terror, standard stack thing. I play an attack reaction. Then I pass. You pass. It resolves. Then we have another window. On and on and on it goes. Right. Now we can stack it up and we can roll it down for last okay. in, first out, so like, that kind of thing. If I put uh, Blessing of Deliverance, the blue version, into play, it's got a three shield. Mm -hmm. That's all it does that turn. It's just okay. defend for three. So I play that. Now do I keep going or do you get it go? Yeah, you keep going on the defense. It's all lay out all defensive cards you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and put another Blessing of Deliverance blue in. Okay. So now I'm at six. You're now at six. That's right. And then I will stop. OK. So six to seven currently. Now I can play any attack reactions that I have out of my hand. So this says attack. That's an action. That's an action. So there's nothing that I can do with an attack reaction. Sometimes it's on your gear as well, which I don't have any. Then I'm going to pass. And then it's going to go to you with any defensive reactions that you might have. So I won't. OK, so we both pass. So yep. let's start resolving the chain. Savage Swing does seven minus six for your defense is take one damage. And then everything that has resolved out of that chain gets to go away. Into the graveyard. Into the graveyard, yeah. And then, end of the turn, I'm going to put a card in my arsenal, and I'm going to shuffle anything that I pitch for resources. It just goes to the bottom of the deck. goes to the bottom of the deck so in eventually, any order that I want. And eventually, getting good at that is relevant. It's going to be terrifying. Because that'll be I like mid to that. late game is when you get back through your deck. Yeah, that That's makes right. sense. Okay. So basically, I wasted one resource that turn. I didn't have a clean way to uh, to make that happen. 
So that's that. Over to you. Well, we will draw. draw. And then I draw my cards. All right. Interesting. Hmm. I'm going to shuffle this, too, because I'm seeing a lot of the same card. And I don't even, I, at the beginning, when we were first kind of exploring this, I was using little tokens to track resources. You really don't need to. Yeah, because you can, s the whole turn is laid out in front the of you. The whole turn is laid out in front of you. You really only sweep it at the end, uh, which is really nice. Hmm. And I've seen, I've definitely seen players do both, where you like pitch to generate resources, then start playing cards and then play cards and then pitch to generate. It, technically, according to the rule book, you play the card and then pitch to generate, uh, from what I can tell. So, I like to do things properly. Mm, mm -hmm. It says you may only pitch a card when there's a resource cost to pay, and you don't already have resource points in your resource pool to pay for that cost. Bada bing. Oh, okay. I, I was only, I shouldn't have shuffled that one card in, and I'll, I'll get that it's back. It's fine. No, no one cares. I just saw, like, my opening hand had three of the same card, and then my second hand had three of the same card, so I was thinking that I just didn't <laughs> shuffle very well. Jay Rowley in quotes, I like to do things properly. Five seconds after illegally shuffling yeah, the deck. Yeah, illegally shuffling the deck, right, exactly. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's try this. I'm going to play Stonewall Confidence. Ooh, look at that. It nice. costs two. So I have to generate two for that. Yep. And I will. You can uh, also generate three. Yep. Just like yep. you did. And it says. So I have a swing on bottom. Uh, Aurora, stay in the. This is an Aurora. Or aura, Stonewall yeah. Aura. Aurora. 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 Uh, Stonewall Confidence is blue. It says uh, stays in play. Go again. Okay. While Stonewall Confidence is in the arena, cards you control that cost three or greater gain plus two defense while defending. Nice. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy it. Okay. So I have a round where I get plus two defense on my three cost cards. I like cards. that. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Um, so I'm just going to put it here since Slick. I can only have one weapon. But it has go again, so I get to go again, and I still have one resource that I haven't used. So now I'm going to play Cartilage Crush. Okay. Um, and it says... Uh, the one, red Cartilage Crush, right? Yeah. And it costs three, so I had one left over. And then I'll go ahead and generate another three. Mm. Uh, and so I get to play it. It says Crush. If Cartley Crush deals four or more damage to a hero, their first action during their next turn costs an additional action to play. Gross. And it's hitting you for seven. OK, so it's hitting me for seven. Now remember, I can't defend during the defend step with this arsenal card. So I've got to go right to my hand and see what I can do here. And now if I take four, four, you, ugh. your first thing costs an extra. Which is a bummer. Yeah, so you basically either commit a card to defense or have to spend more resources. So it probably costs you a card on one turn or another. And my goal here is to basically just put a little tempo pressure on you. It is. The whole thing. Uh, okay, I'm going to declare two defenses with the old flock of the feather walkers. Not at all what those cards want to be doing, but here we are. Cool art. So Look I've got that. four defense. Then it goes to you if you have any reactions. you have any attack reactions? I don't. All right, and then it goes to me. Defense reactions, I don't have any there, so we both pass. Let's resolve it. Seven minus four, I'll take three damage. All right, we made an exchange. Great exchange, yeah. All right, and then that'll resolve, so this yep. goes away? I'll resolve, yeah. And then I'm out of cards, so I'll end my turn, and then I'm going to take these two cards and put them on bottom as I see fit. No arsenal, huh? Nope, just exploring, and then I draw back up. Draw, my, draw back up to four, yeah. You draw back up at the end of your turn. Cool. Basically, how that works. Because like now, I've got two cards in my hand, and I'm trying to get something to show for it. Okay. So the arsenal. What am I doing here? Um, cost less. Can't do that. Defender less than two. Can't plus one. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Have at thee. Um. Ooh, and I can also hold it because don't sleep on your weapon either. Your weapon's got oh, the yeah. thing. I'm basically like trying to like scale up. I wanted to use some cards from hand, get something in play, just and kind of see like, what I'm it looks like. I'm just gonna start exploring a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, the first ten games are gonna be rough. All right, so the first action, uh, the only action I've got, barraging Bronhide, yellow. It's a three cost card, uh, and it's gonna do six damage to you. And so I'm gonna pitch a flock of the Featherwalkers blue to generate the three resources I need to pay for that card. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it says if it's defended by less than two non-equipment cards, 
it gains plus one. So it would do seven damage unless you defend with two or more non-equipment cards. Well, I don't like that. Well, hey. Uh, I will defend with my own barraging Brian. Oh my blue. gosh. It's two, but it costs three resources. Mm -hmm. And generates three as well, yeah. Cost three. So my Stonewall Confidence Blue is giving it plus two defense, mm -hmm. making it a four. Very nice. Uh, but I'm only going to defend with that one card. Right So on. you're going to get plus one still. All right, so seven minus four is going to be three damage to you. I don't have any attack. Do you have any reactions? Nope. We'll do the old card gamer's uh, Back uh, etiquette. Yep. You have three seconds to say something. Otherwise, <laughs> That's right. I'm, gonna Otherwise keep going. I'm going. I'm rolling. <laughs> All right, so I put a uh, pitch uh, underneath my deck, and I draw a fresh hand of four cards. Okay. And then at the start of my turn, Stonewall Confidence is going to go away, and I assume that goes to the discard pile after That's right. it's gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, now. Now is the time. I can't wait to really appreciate what's going on here. I the know. Discovering Games is so fun. Like, we've had such a good run with the throwbacks and everything. It's just like... The learning pro I've probably learned more games in the past 16 weeks of my life, certainly than over the course of my entire life. We are definitely playing the widest range of games in a short period of time. It's really helpful. Uh, it is really crazy. I think that's also what shows, we've been doing Throwback Thursday streams for the past three or four months. All kinds of games from the 90s and 2000s, mostly card games. But the thing uh, Flesh and Blood's doing that I appreciate comparatively, now that we have that context, while the like basically all the nuance is in the decision, mm -hmm. there's no weight. I'm not carrying knowledge with me. Right? You're not slowly building up like plus one to all things, plus three to this thing. Reference this to reference discard that. Discard this you know. to make a big effect. Yeah, it's it's you don't really have cool. Have to carry a lot of info with you. You're right. And as equipment gets destroyed, that's even less information that actually happens on the board. Uh, Steve Dove, I don't think this game has mill. I don't think you even lose when you run out of deck. I don't know that for sure, but. Uh, and then somebody asking, do you always draw up to four? You draw up to your intellect value, um, which all the heroes so far have four early on. Mm. Thomas, yes, we're going to continue Throwback Thursdays for sure. We just had Fourth of July holiday, so we had to ditch Thursday. So something I'm, I continue to have happen is like, so I was reading a note here. It says you have two or more cards in your pitch, so you use them as resources. That cost three or greater, it gets plus two. So in my head, it, that, that was saying that provide three or more resources, mm -hmm. and it's actually the cost. Yeah, the number so the, the top, the top right. right. So it's showing the icons, interestingly, but on my card up here, it, it has a number. Yep. So I almost wish it had like a num like three with a, the little logo there that, for the, the cost. The different, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. I'll eventually get a hold of that, but that, that, that was definitely tripping me up. Okay, I definitely want to do that. And then I think that's the best way to do it. Okay. So I will use my Anothos action, which is cool. Uh, it says, once per turn action, spend three attack. If I have two or more cards in my pitch with a cost three or greater, it gains plus two. So to pay for that, I will be pitching two cards. Only one of them costs, so I'm not going to get the plus two modifier, unfortunately. That's what I was uh, mm -hmm. recognizing. Yep. Uh, but it generates three resources. I get to use the attack, so it's going to be, I'm going to slide it slide up. Slide it up. It's doing a, and this should be gone, uh, four damage attack with my hammer. Okay, there's no buffs currently on, so just four. Oh, just four. Who cares just about cash four damage, four. man? Um, oh, man. I understand now. Oh, my gosh. I understand more than I ever have, man. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. It's already happened. Uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So I declare defense. I'm going to declare a uh, two defense there, and then I'm thinking this. And that's scour the battlefield, blue. And this, and that, and then this. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, scour the battlefield, or okay. the battlescape. It's just two to your four. Now you have attack reactions. If you have any reactions you'd like to make. I'll pass. All right, and I will pass my uh, reaction as well, so I'll take two damage. Okay. What's the trick? There's no trick. That resolves? It Re resolves, yep. This comes back. Uh, end of round, I'll put this into my arsenal. Right on. And then I'll draw back up. Make sure I understand what's in my arsenal here. Some of this art is just magnificent. It's fantastic, right? OK. Mmm. That's cool. 
OK. So I'm going to kick things off on my turn by playing a Savage Swing from my arsenal. I've got to generate. OK, so you can play an attack from your arsenal. So I can't. An attack yeah. action or a defense reaction? Anything that isn't pitching resources or a shield defense. So basically, anything that you're using for the card text. So you can play any card you can play. That's right. OK. That's okay. Right. That, that's a good way to think of it. Yeah, that's, that, that clicks more than the, the first, uh, first time. OK. And then I'm going to pitch an Awakening Bellow Blue to generate three resources, covering the, the one resource that Savage Swing costs and floating with two. OK. And so then we go to defense, and this is your one chance to put all cards that you want to defend with on. You can't add them later. We're going to do it. So I'm going to use my arsenal. OK. And this is Springboard Somersault Ooh, Yellow. One exception, yeah. If Springboard Somersault is played from your arsenal, it gains plus two defense. Oh, hold on. We got to resolve this. Additional cost to play, discard a random card from my hand. <laughs> That's a lot. For a four card hand, a random discard is a, a cost, let me tell you. All right, so you discarded Breakneck Battery Red. And it's important to note that uh, I gain Intimidate now because it's a six or higher. Uh, card. So let's look at how Intimidate's going to resolve before we go there. Oh, who's triggering this? Oh, look at, yeah, 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 check yeah, out yeah, Reinar, yeah. right? That's cool. So he, that, I get it. That's We've also clicked. got now the Romping Club technically is plus one because I just discarded one with six or more. Yeah. So if I had a way to go again, I could then throw the club in at an extra cost. That would be a lot. Extra cost, a lot of heat to be taken. Awesome, right? So let's see how Intimidate resolves here. I love this, uh, this little rule book. The he Hero's Guide? Intimidate. Or maybe it's just not even here. Oh, it's because it's on the card. It just tells me. OK, so it says, <laughs> target hero banishes face down a random card from their hand. From my hand. At the beginning of the end phase, return all cards banished this way to their owner's hand. Oh, you. OK. So you banish a face down uh, card from your hand. I get to pull one at random. And then at the beginning of the end of this phase, it's going to go get back, back to your hand. Yeah. So basically, you could prevent me from using that card for defense, if yeah. it's like my really good defensive there card. You go. Perfect. In my Banish Zone. All right, now you get to play any of your shields. All right, shield so I'm going to use my Arsenal, Springboard Somersault, yellow. Uh, it's got a two defense, and it says if it's played from my Arsenal, it gains plus two defense. Nice. OK, so four to currently a six. Yeah, and let's see if I want Any additional defense uh, cards, if you'd like. Hmm. What you gonna do? Timing all the go agains and stuff are, is really important. Yes, it is. Mm. Oof. I'm totally doing this. Oh my gosh. Let's show off some concepts. <laughs> <laughs> then you can play any number of defense cards. When you're playing the defense cards in the defense card step, just look at the bottom right is all that matters. And you can play as many as you want. And then you go to attack reactions and defense reactions. So when I'm playing my action, that's a sacred step for me. It can't really be interrupted. When Zach's playing his defense cards, that's also sacred. There's no weird interplay going on. And then when we get to reactions is when we actually go back and forth on a stack-based uh, life. All right, I will just, that's the card I'm playing. OK. So then we go to the attack reactions, defense reactions. I'm going to use one. I'm going to destroy these pretty boots. Attack reaction, destroy Snapdragon Scaler's target attack action card with cost one or less. Gains go again. Mm hmm. How are you going to have a resource left over there? I have two resources left. Oh, my, my. <laughs> what have we here? OK, I. Now, wait a second. Is this one I would actually put in things like my armor? No. That all happens during the defense step. So you have to declare anything that has let me, a shield let me do in the that. bottom right. I need okay. to use this because I want to use the action ability on it. OK. And then So that's technically, so let's just do that properly. So Savage Swing resolves, extra cost is paid, your I defense springboard, step. I yeah. I use my helmet, so now I'm at a 5. And in fact, this is a generic defense reaction. You don't actually play this yet. So first really? of all, yeah, it's a reaction. So look at the bottom of the card. If it says reaction, that's the only time you can play it. Um, so check out what the helmet okay. does here. So the helmet says, uh, Battle Warren, if you defend with a helm, helmet, put minus one counter on it. So it loses armor stat. 
uh, but it gives me one defense. Right on. So we'll do that at the end whenever you've used it. Mm. So six coming at you with mm -hmm. Intimidate that's been resolved. You now have one on defense. Do you want to add any other card to the defense? This is my reaction phase? Not yet. Okay, no more. We're okay. Good. So now we go to the reaction phase. I'll start with the scalers. Boom. Flip them over, destroy them. This now has go again. You can respond to that if you'd like, mm -hmm. or we can let it resolve, which it probably will, and then you will use your own reaction. Right. I will let it resolve. Right on. Then I get my reaction. Yeah. We'll go plus four with a springboard, somersault, yellow. If played from Arsenal, it gains plus two. Beautiful. So now you're at four, five, to my six. So you're going to take one damage. I'm passing on re any further reactions, and I'm I assuming you're doing pass. the same. So I'm just going to turn this sideways up here. To sh well, I'll put the token on it. OK. Savage Swing has resolved. But I do have go again. So I've refreshed my action point for the turn. So now I'm going to spend my last two resources on another attack action. Get rid of these two resources. It's called Pack Hunt. And it has Intimidate, which means that I get to pull another card from your hand and banish it. Hmm. Mm, this one. That goes here and I get it back? You will get it back at the end phase, yeah. So now you get to uh, you get to decide what you're going to do. Do you want to put any defense cards, any uh, little shields in the way? Let's use my iron <laughs> and my iron, I guess. My iron rot legs and my iron rot plate. OK, cool. So that's two to my six. I don't have any attack reactions. Do you have any defense reactions? No, sir. All right, so take four. All right, now flip those face down because they are broken. Da, 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 da. Awakening Bellas goes to the bottom. At the end phase, you get those cards back that were banished. And I draw four new cards. Don't mind if I do. All right, now. And these should be gone. Fascinating. This is literally a game, everyone says tempo like it, it, it's everything that card games do. You know, it's like, ah, that's tempo advantage. And it's like, yeah, but this game actually is just, it's so a game of like, it's like tennis. It is like right? tennis. It's volleys and it's, it's weird because it's like, I think the, one of the biggest mechanics of it is knowing when to take damage. Yeah. And so when, when to, to allow your on. opponent to get a little bit ahead mm -hmm. uh, so that you can build into like a crazy turn. And also, like with Reinar, I can defend with cards to make sure that I discard a card with six or more, which is really cool. And uh, Kaya asking a good question, talking about like escalating turns. There's a lot less building that goes on over the course of the game. But like I've got this, uh, if we pull up this blue time snap potion, this is an example of something that I can spend my turn playing. So it uses my one action point, And then I can destroy it to get two action points later in the game. So there are going to be decks that just kind of like try to survive while they build to some kind of a board state that they can then take advantage of later in the game. And maybe that's a 12 damage turn or a 15 damage turn that they can explode into. And all these different classes and the different players are going to play them differently. Uh, so I'm sure that there's going to be interesting deck builds for how you might want to do your Reinar, your Bravo. Is it a, a late game explosion? Is it just constant tempo throughout? Is it an early rush deck? You know, I think all the templates will be around. Man, there's a lot here. There's so much more than you think with four cards in your hand, right? It's insane. So look at this, like, Goliath Gauntlet. It says, mm -hmm. action, destroy it. The next attack action with cost two or greater, I play this turn, gains plus two attack, go again. Mm -hmm. OK, so plus two attack, and then it's this action I go again on top of. Like the next thing. Yeah. It's yeah, not giving yeah, the attack yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So you get plus two on your next one, and then you get to go again, which means you get to actually play an attack. Yeah. Which yeah, make yeah, a lot yeah. of sense, right? Yeah, Kai, no worries. I'm glad you're, you guys are here, too. This is a, uh, it's great to be exploring this game with you. This is a super, this is like one of the most fun processes in all of this hobby. And like we traditionally have been doing it off camera and then bringing you, like, here's Learning Netrunner. Like after six months of like, really discovering what's at the heartbeat of this game. You don't see the sloppy, like, uh, we don't know how this works, and uh, what is it, how does this card make tempo for me? How does this card work? Those kinds of things. So it's just cool to like be able to do that, especially in isolation, where it, you know, a lot of times we can't discover these games with our friends right now. So uh, we get to extend that invitation to uh, a greater community. It's really nice. 
So we're just happy you guys are here. It's been a very weird phase of life for all of us. Hmm. This is really interesting. Yeah, isn't it say? weird how four cards can be so crazy, devastatingly yeah. different? Uh huh. Okay, let's do this. I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my action destroy Goliath Gauntlet. The next action card I play with cost two or greater. This gets gets plus two. Right on. So I'm gonna use it and I'll remember it then. Then I'm gonna use Bravo's action. It costs two. Mm. So I'm gonna discard or pitch a Cartilage Crush to generate three resources. And he, his action on Young Bravo is two. Oh, here we go. Till the end of the turn, my attack actions with cost three or greater gain dominate, which means you can only defend with one card. Okay. Uh, go again. So he lets me go. Right, again. right, right. Here we go. Now we're chaining. Yeah. So then I'm gonna play a debilitate mm -hmm. attack. Oof. So it costs two or more, which means it gets plus two. Mm -hmm. So it's a nine. Plus it does dominate, so you can only defend with one card. I had one resource left over, so I still have to pay three. So I will pay three. And what were we saying over here on the arsenal? Mm -hmm. Any card I could play, I could play from here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you just can't use it in defense uh, as a as or a, to generate resources. You can't use it for. Here's a good way to think of it. You can't use it for its bottom right or top left purpose. Okay. So I can't use yeah. it here. <laughs> I also can't play it into my defense stack as a shield. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got you. I'm glad, John. I'm glad you like the learning process. Let's play this here. You can't um, do that yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only sorry, sorry, sorry. Phase, Okay, yeah. so I'm, pay I'm paying. I was deciding what to pay with. So I had one left here, right? Mm -hmm. And it cost me four. So I'll use a Wounded Bull Blue, which generates three more, allowing me to pay for right even four. So you're full up on resources. It's all done. Yeah. And the build to yellow says if it has Crush. If Debilitate deals four or more damage to a hero, their first attack during their next turn is minus two attack. That seems like it's very likely to happen. Given that I, I think I figured out what Bravo is trying to do, obviously, which is like a big attack with his dominate ability means you have to take. He, he has a bunch of the attacks that if you do at least four damage, it's a penalty. Right. He right. needs to be triggering that to make sure. Uh, at first, I was like, I want a big attack. You have to waste a bunch of cards on. And then now I'm just like, actually, I want this these effects to trigger. All right. So I will put one in to the pile here. It's a Smash Instinct. It has a three in the bottom right. That's all we care about now. And it's yellow. And because you have the dominate ability, I can only put one in. So you're nine to my three. So I'm, I'm getting hit for six here. You have any reactions? Attack reactions? No. <laughs> We're good. All right. I, I don't have any defense reactions. Uh, so this might be a good time for me to... Ch if I could throw my helmet in here, I would still take four. So I would still be at the minus two. I think so ideally I'm you use those to stop a, an effect like that. I am totally waiting. So yeah. six is gone. Yeah. To the graveyard. All right. So then this goes away. This flips down. Now I can play into my arsenal. So I will. Basically, the end phase starts. Anything in your hand, you can put one in the arsenal. You pitch uh, to the bottom of the deck, and then you draw a new hand. Yep. All right. So that that flow. This is a lot cleaner than I like understood it to be yeah. initially. Yeah. So my first attack this turn is minus two, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, have I got news for you. I'm going to play a time snap potion, which is not an attack at all. Hey, if I get you to not attack me, then great. But it's taking my action, so it's going to use my action point, And it's a basically going to stay here to put in the arena. And then when I use it as an action, I gain two action points, right? So you'll get three actions next round. So I could get them whenever I want. Whenever I choose to destroy it. So I'm just sitting here. I got my potion ready to oh, go. Oh, you get two actions. So yep. technically, you have to spend an action later to destroy it to do that. That's right. So you get a turn with that. So you're spending your turn now to get an, a double, a back-to-back -back turn later. You which couldn't is be more cool. right. You... Timestamp potion is going to be a card that I like a lot. <laughs> you couldn't be more right. Okay, and then I will put one in my arsenal, and then I'll draw up to three. How cool. Or up to four. Man, I love this. I, I think this is great. Obviously, we liked it enough to be doing this in the first place, but... <laughs> I'm excited to we get, get to, to the bottom of this in, one. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I feel like the well is deep. Okay, mine? Yeah. Hmm. Mm hmm. Should have used that helmet way earlier. Yeah, Lion Day, you're right on. Yeah, you do have to pay for pitch reactions. Anytime you're basically using the card, not for its little symbol on the bottom. Uh, but you're using the card and resolving the text, you do have to honor the cost of it, like you would in any traditional card game. So if you want the actual effect of the card, you look at the cost and you got to pay it. 
But already, it's like the thing that caught us on this one, this is so different from everything that I've experienced. From Battletech to Lord of the Rings TCG to Middle Earth to Spoils to Game of Thrones. So different. Wow. Yeah, Evan, so and anyone uh, curious about the, the welcome decks, the IRA welcome decks, those are free. You only pay shipping on those. We are working to get a ton of those in because they sold out immediately. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It turns out $0 is a, a number that people really are into, and a lot of people want to try this game out. So we'll get those back as soon as we can. It could be as early as this week. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's something that we'll keep doing. Um, we have set up where we should be able to regularly resupply and all this stuff yeah. quickly. Uh, so we'll, we'll take it as it comes. But the response was incredible. So it's exciting to see so many people interested. Uh, and it's, it's the kind of game, I think if you're going to play a collectible game, being able to try it first is really important, yeah. which is what's a bummer for them about all the local stores being closed right now. Because I think that would be obviously the most effective way to try these games. Absolutely. In person. OK, let's do this. I'm going to play. Uh, emerging Power, it costs two. It's Emerging Power Red, so I'm going to discard this card, uh, Debilitate Yellow, it generates two resources. Okay. But Emerging Power Red says, uh, it's an aura, stays in play, it gains go again, it has go again. At the beginning of my action phase, I can destroy it to make the next Guardian attack card I play this turn get plus three attack. Wow. So it's next next round, I'll have a Guardian attack at plus three if I can. Cool, because you can only do it at the beginning of your action phase. Yeah. Right on. So cool. I, I can't get it now. Right on. Um... And then I will generate three, or I'll play this card, which is another uh, Stonewall Confidence, another aura. And it says, go again, it stays in play. Nice. While it's in Love play, it. my three cost cards get plus two defense. You got to generate your two resources for that? Yeah. So I will uh, generate three there, technically. Mm, one floating. So I have one floating. Quick question here. Ross uh, saying, US only for sample decks. No, what, will it, we ship worldwide. Is, it'll just be more shipping. Um, and they're they're very light and small, so I'd say it'd probably be like probably fifteen ish. I bet it's less to than UK. That. I bet My, it's like ten bucks. Probably nice. less to Canada, et cetera. And we are actively working. I oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe how hard we're working on getting uh, international uh, shipment possibilities, so we can offer subscriptions in like Canada, UK, and and elsewhere, EU, et cetera. So. Uh, keep an eye on us. That's coming soon. That's right. Uh, then I'm going to use the Anothos attack here. I need more resources, so I'll discard uh, Disable Blue uh, or Pitch It. And it's If I have two or more three-cost cards in my pitch, you it totally gets plus do. two. So I've got three over here. It's going to be a six attack coming at you with the hammer. Mm. Okay. Six attack with the hammer. So this is where I get to just kind of look at my turn and think about what in the world I'm going to do. It's hammer time. Okay, so I need to do two there. I want to get rid of... Okay. <laughs> ben Sweeney, ha, said in quotes him, ha ha, TC won't get me to subscribe to another game, dot dot dot, also me. Currently painting my Crisis Protocol figures because TC pointed out that I could just get the characters I like. <laughs> Hey, that's it. I've been painting that a lot. I spent the whole weekend actually painting uh, Thor. I'm, I'm going heavy white on like the cape and the fabric and stuff. And I, I definitely went to a, a deeper level of Moria on that paint uh, experience because white okay, is a challenge. And there's lots of layers of gradients of gray and stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying being able to just have some quiet time on the weekends painting. Hope you're digging right. it as well. Okay, see? See? We're already, getting, we're already getting there. See? Won't you see? Don't you see? Okay, so based on what I think my next turn is going to be, I think I can block all of this without worrying about an issue. Let's see if I'm right. So I'm going to go three there. Wait, what is there? What, three what there. Are these cards? A defense, right, so just defense. defense. Oh, just look at the shields. Six, you're at four plus two, which is six. Yep. Uh, attack reactions, you have any? I have none. All right, I have no defense reactions. Take zero damage. We did it. And then into the turn, flip them underneath your deck in whatever order you'd like, and then draw back up to your hand size. Oh, Kaya, that's awesome. We do do Pokemon subscriptions, yes. It's the best thing. The booster boxes just literally show up. And uh, Pokemon is so regimented that it's just like... And it's a good price, too. 
Jared says, I'm not crazy. You fellas did play this months ago, right? We did, yeah. We did, yeah. We, um, did. we, were, we were impressed enough that we started a dialogue with the publisher, uh, Legend Story Studio, and they impressed us enough that we are now here uh, re-featuring mm -hmm. re the game, uh, which I'm excited about. Okay. I'm going to play from my arsenal the Wrecker Romp. Okay. And it red. cost me two. It's a red card. It cost mm -hmm. me two. So I'm going to generate three resources with this Time Snap Potion. All right. For the ease of everyone watching at home, that means I have one floating. And then I have an additional cost to take care of. Discard a random card from hand. I only have one. Mm. It's a six uh, attack, yep. which means Intimidate is going to fire. Banished. Banish that one. You'll get it back at the end. That's a cool mechanic. Yep. And uh, now you've got an eight cost, eight uh, attack card. Well, well, well. Um... <laughs> James, we're on it, man. We, we might look at some custom stuff for this one. For sure. Yeah, I think the minus one tokens are interesting. Um, I do like what you've been doing, where if you have floating resources, you put it on top of your pitch. Yeah. That, that does make it super it's easy. It's helpful. Because that's one piece of information you kind of just have to remember. I didn't think I needed it, but and then, then you think you did. Right now I do. Probably <laughs> as we get, it'll be like Netrunner. Once we get really advanced. Yeah, you'll like, just yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You used four. Okay, I need to really think about this. What You're hitting for eight? Hitting for eight, No man. modifiers? No modifiers. No cards left? No cards left. So this no is, funny this is worth knowing, right? It's like, I, if I take eight, I go down to three health. Mm -hmm. And like, that's probably fine. We'll see. <laughs> if, if, I, if I can come back with like a, a, enough of a heater, because yeah. I know I've got plus two, so if I have a big attack, I can make it where you can only block with one. You could hit me for nine, potentially. Yeah, yeah that's what, that's so what I've I'm... I've got my three. I've also got three equipment here, so I'm already at minus three if I want to throw all this yeah. in. You know? yeah. you, you've used all of your equipment. You're playing for the past already, whatever that means. Bubba J, speaking of subs, just checked USPS, and I have five packages from TC queued up or on the way. Bubba, you are a champion. Thank you so much for that. I, I hope the service, obviously I, that's going to be a subscription service. Um, and a lot of things are releasing all at once now. Asmodee seems to have regimented where they're doing a lot of releases on the same Fridays. Uh, so thank you for that. I, I hope it's convenient for you. And, and if you have any, uh, anything to say about the service, I'd love to hear it in the chat. Van, we're literally packing and shipping your FAB order right now. I can hear the tape dispenser in the background. We're still a small enough operation that I can hear the tape dispenser. And we can only have one person in the ops room, so, because um, we don't want to infect the world. You know, because like that's important. Okay, here's what I'll do. I'm going to block with a debilitate red. It costs four, so my stonewall confidence will give it a plus two defense, right on. making it a five. Mm. Mm -hmm. Old Stonewall himself. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So that's all you're doing for defense? That's the card I'm putting in, yeah. Okay. You can put in multiple cards if you want. I'm okay. good. So now we go to attack reactions. I don't have any fanciness in my mm -hmm. hand. I'm not going to do anything weird. Uh, and then I will uh, pass it over. You got any reactions? I do not. All right. So eight minus five. Taking three. Down you to eight. Decide how much that is. And then... Uh, Go, and I lose the one that I had floating. All right, at the beginning of my turn, Stonewall Confidence goes away. Emerging Power also goes away. My next Guardian attack is plus three. Woo! So I'll get this back from my Banish Zone. And then math. I think this uh, is Van, that's play. correct. Stonewall wouldn't add two because it says a card that you played on defense, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, cards you control with cost theory greater gain plus two while defending. So if you don't play a card, you don't get that bonus. Yeah. All right. I will pass. Use my Bravo action until the end of turn. My attack action cards with cost three or greater gain dominate. Go oh, again. Oh no. Here we go. <laughs> so then I'll pay for that using this here. Here's the moment. Blessing of deliverance. Um, then I'm going to play a red debilitate. Cost four. So I have one left over here, and I'm going to put another three in. Mm. Uh, so I'll pay for it, and then this is an oh, eight. Man, you just chained out nine, really nicely. Nine, ten, eleven, and you get to play one card into the stack. Yeah, because you have the two plus three, so it's plus two. Oh uh, no, 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 that's just the that's the hammer gets. Oh, good. okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that because no. it's very cute over here. You've got two, three. Yeah. Costumes, so this this know? is a debilitate red. It's got it's a guardian action, so it's a guardian attack. Mm -hmm. Gets the plus three for my emerging power red. 
and then I use my action to make it where it has a uh, dominate. So you only get to put one card in. And if, if I want. if I take damage, then uh, four more damage than my next attack minus is minus two. Is yeah, you, you see what Bravo is doing. Here. I see it. Yeah. Uh, Casey Stump, really good question here. Just popping in, what other game would you compare this to the most? This is one of the most fascinating reasons why we're kind of uh, really interested in exploring this because it it I, doesn't really have an obvious comparative. I think the closest, it's somewhere, if there were a triangle, mm -hmm. it's somewhere between Magic. Sure. Destiny. Like all card games are, you know. But like this is really, I mean, this is this is like a direct descendant of magic to me. But we're also, we're not playing creatures. We're not generating mana over time. So we're not yeah. building up to anything. We're actively, it's one character versus one character versus summoning a bunch of stuff that's fighting itself. I think the most yeah. similar to magic, it's a trading card game, but the universe. Oh, sure. Fantasy. Okay. It, it, like the setting and the, but the, the gameplay is different. But it, it reminds me a little bit of Destiny in that way. Mm -hmm. So that's another pivot in this triangle. It is a little bit of the 1v1 feel. So of it's Destiny, like, yeah. in Destiny, there was teams of two or three, but even the equipment kind of feel like the <laughs> upgrades I'm putting down, they just start and play. So it's a, it's a little different, but like that, that vibe's going on. Um, and then there's probably a third game, and it's probably one of the games we haven't played as much, you know, like the Universal Fighting System or the Versus or that's like. Right. We even have like the, a even character. The, uh, what's the one from Level 99? The Ken versus yeah, yeah, Ryu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind what of it's a called. thing. Um, I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a, a unique thing. It also is a much more realistic fantasy setting than Magic, from what I've Absolutely. seen and understood yeah. about it. Um, it's, it's a little actually, more gritty and it, a little more it human. It reminds me you know? more of WoW than it does Magic. Okay. Yep. But I could be wrong in that. I'm not as experienced no, it, in WoW. It does. It's, it's like a re more realistic uh, WoW-ish. It's definitely, it's just more realistic, honestly, is the thing, is these are like, realistic personas we're looking at rather than very fanciful things. Maybe a better thing is the Dungeons and Dragons world. Well, that could be anything. But I mean like the classic like this fantasy setting, it's like it's it's almost the tone is is uh, Lord of the Ringsy mm -hmm. in the like seriousness. I don't know how to it, it's not it's like Lord of the Rings meets wow. It's certainly not it's, whimsical or like Yeah. It feels very serious. It's gr it's grittier. It's like yeah. gritty. Yeah, it's a gritty fantasy world. But it still has magic. I mean, my weapon is a romping club, and yours is a hammer, for goodness sakes. So it does. Someone's saying it feels a little like raw deal. I could see that. Yeah. Forgotten Realms. Yeah, Jesse, I could feel that. Forgotten Realms. All right, so on to the real, what really matters here. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I have an 11 here. damage attack coming at your <clears throat> 9 health character, uh, and you can only play one card. Hope you have at least uh, two. I definitely have that. Okay. It's like a darker Lord of the Rings. It has less, less, I don't know how to explain it. You just have to look at the cards. Like Bravo to me is a little goofy. Yeah, you know, he's just the, he's the bard. I'm, I'm not against it. He's, he's the definitely bard. the bard though. You know, look no at one that. sings like Gaston. That's right. All right, well, I'm trying to, so defense is as much about your next turn as it is about what you really want to do. I will say, uh, Phyllis Master, there is a, and I'm, I'm going to read this. I need to grab one of them. The, there's a lore book that they sent to retailers early on, and like it's like this beautiful, hardback, full art, uh, huge 200-page book. Um, like it's like, well, 200 pages is not a huge book, but the size of the book itself mm -hmm. is big. Uh, and I'm interested in, in diving into that to have a, a better... Uh, temperature on like the actual setting itself. Hmm. You're doing eleven. So again, I, I no one swings a hammer like Gaston. I might. So like, and the, the problem is like I'm doing eleven, and you know next round, if you don't defeat me by then, I can probably intimidate, and you you're only gonna like if I hit another eight or nine next round, it's bad. It's real bad. Okay, but what do I, so I need to generate resources too, so can I even, oh my gosh. <laughs> Phyllis Master, yeah, it, it, similar vibes here with Sky Terror and Flesh and Blood. He says the fact that a 200 page lore book exists gets me interested. Uh, and they've been working on this game for like seven or eight years, so the, the lore and the art and the game mechanics itself, this is definitely not something, you know, that was just put together in like a six month period to, to put a product out. See, these are the decisions I was looking for, man. That's exactly what I needed. Lion Day says, uh, wish they sold pre-constructed decks for those heroes. They're really neat. Uh, what heroes are you talking about? Mm. 
Mm, I don't think it's time, man. I don't think it's time. OK. Um, a three defense. OK. Mm. The, the arcane rise in here. So yeah, apparently those are in the box boxes. Uh, Max, yeah, so the starting characters from the first set were in starters, and I think in the second set they're just in the booster packs. But as far as I know, they're like not exactly difficult to get. OK. And I can only play from, I can't play more than one from my hand, or I can't defend with more than one from their hand. OK, so I can still use my armor. Because you can't dominate my armor. Where did you, where did you see from hand? Uh, from their hand. So I'm going to use Barkbone Strapping yeah, and yeah. Raging Onslaught as my four defense, and okay. then we'll go to attack reactions for you. I have none. I have no defense reactions. So I'm going to take 11 minus 4. What is that? 7. Eight, 7. Ugh, so I'm down to 2. Yep. The pillow date goes to the discard. These cards go under. And my equipment is battle-worn, so I get to basically put a little token on it, and then I can still destroy it to make some money. And now my next attack is what? Is it minus two? Is that the yeah thing minus that's... two? Because you took four more damage. So minus mm -hmm. tokens could be good too. Like if I could drop down a minus two token, so we don't forget that. Oh man. Hmm? You got it. You got to generate wow. money. Is the thing. All right. So I'm gonna use this instant. Phil's Master asking, what do the starting products look like for this? A pre-constructed deck for one player. So we have an Ira free demo deck on the site. We're, we sold out like so quick last night. We're going to get more of those in. So you can grab two of those to try it. They also have these starter decks. Um, there's a the pack of four of them listed on the site. I'll link to it in a second. But it's four fully pre-constructed decks for the original four heroes. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Hmm. Man, I love this now. Did one of these crack? No, you use the... I just use this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah you click. It's clicking, there, right? I mean, there's like... I, I'm, I'm really impressed with actually how difficult this is. Okay, I'm going to play the Barraging Brawn Hide, and I'm going to destroy the Bark Bone Strapping to gain resources equal to half this number. Round it down. Two? What's half of five? 2.5? Round it down as two. two. OK, so that generates two resources right off the bat. This should have been over here on the last turn. Sorry about that. OK, so two out of nowhere. I need to generate one more. Now is not the time, right? Now is not the time. It's almost the time. To go for it? All right, I'll generate two more there. So I've got four total, and I use three there. So there's currently one floating. There it is. And then it's six minus two because of your last turn, plus one unless you defend with two non-equipment cards. He bravely ran away, away. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't used my club once. Uh. It's such a dance. Mm -hmm. You got you. You have right now. Are you thinking about your next turn? Yeah. How you're gonna attack? Oh, it's right. Yeah. And I'm like, like I can actually defend with cards to make sure I hit my uh, intimidate bonus. So I have only six cost attacks in my hand. Mm-hmm. Because like if I just don't defend, I have a much stronger turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Jay Redley asking a good question. With no summons, what is this barraging Bronhide supposed to be in a duel? So I think about it as like the, uh, you know how you sometimes you play those fighting games, you know, and then you can press a button combination and something comes in from the side of your screen like a, you know, an ally or uh, something you know that's that is kind of under your control. Like your Aquaman, which would be me playing in like that uh, that DC fighting game that Robert and I play so much. Aquaman is bustedly good in that game. 
Uh, you like disappear for a second and like a shark shoots out and grabs you from like the ground. That's how I envision it is like this thing comes out of the woods that Reinar is like friends with or like communing with this weird forest thing. Comes out, stabs Zack and runs away, you know, that kind of thing. I'm gonna block with an emerging power red. Oh, are you? It's got a three defense. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay, so it's currently a six minus two plus one, so it's a five damage attack because of the, the uh, text on Barrage and Bronhide yellow. And it's gonna be minus three. I don't have any attack reactions. Do you have any defense reactions? Nope. All so right. I take so two. Take two damage. Down to six. Call me in the morning. And then I'll put this card into my arsenal. Sure. And sure then I'll enough. draw four and hope that you don't have enough. Some nasty combo. All right, well, I don't. So here's what I will do. I'm going to play. Injustice, yes, Phyllis Master, that's correct. I'm going to play an emerging power. Cost me two. Uh, it has a go again. Mm -hmm. To gain the next round, I get a plus three. Then I'll spend. Uh, so it cost me two. I have one left. Yeah, I'll just spend one to use my Anothis attack. So it gets plus two because I have I don't have two three costs over here. It's a four attack. Mm-hmm. Let me actually do that different. Instead of attacking, I'll just play that. And then I will spend an action here. Mm. What does that one do? Action, uh, spend a resource. I had one floating. Destroy it, and then my hero gets plus one intellect till the end of the turn. Very close. You dropped to five, yeah. Yeah. So then... Makes a lot of sense. I'll draw. So I'll go up to five. And I'm just living for the weekend My now. My deck is upside down, Jay, because I like to draw like this. We all have quirks. Yeah, every, <laughs> it, you wouldn't play card games if you didn't love all the quirks that come with it. Oh, this needs to go under, too. Bad about that. I've already missed it. It's like Sky Tear attaching mana. I'm so bad at it. What? What? That's fantastic. All right, are you ready for some football here? This is the this is the this is the turn. Whew. Bravo's about to flex if you don't take him out right here. Now, here's the question. Can I have multiple instances of intimidate? Like this says target uh, when you discard a card with six or more during action phase, intimidate. And I have a card in my hand that says intimidate. I'm gonna guess those can both trigger during yeah. the turn, right? Yeah, I think so. Because it's not even a keyword. It's like a it triggers immediately, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let me see what I can do here. G-Time, really awesome to hear that. So I was really happy with this game and demonstration. Thanks, guys. Glad to be here. Uh, being able to show games like this is really... Uh, it's fun for us to be able to do it, but then it's obviously super helpful, so we're happy to do it. I need money. Okay. All right, all right, I got this. So if we do this, yes. So if we do this, and then this, and then one of these, and then this, then... Isn't it crazy you have a four card hand and that's the turn you're working out? Well, then we just might have some action here. All right, have at the bun. Um, First action, pop in this time snap potion. All right, two actions left now. Two actions remain. Two action points, the hard way. Then, I'm going to play the Wrecker Romp Blue. Additional cost, I'll discard a card. It's a six damage attack. I'm going to pay for that with a three resource generating barraging beat down blue. So that leaves me with one floating resource. That was your health. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's so small you didn't <laughs> that's notice it. a clever it. trick. Uh, so that's one resource. And then I will discard a random card for your uh, thing. OK. It is a seven attack smash instinct. So we're going to trigger Intimidate here off of Rhinar. There was a card I really didn't want you to pull, and that was not it. So I'm feeling all right. OK. And then. We are going to uh, pass it over to you, of course, where I'm currently a six damage attack. And you can decide to defend if you would like. All right, I will defend. I'll play a staunch response, which has a five defense. What? It also says an additional cost I played staunch response. I can pay four. If I do, it gets plus three defense. What is wrong with staunch your response deck? blue? Isn't that crazy? That's so good. 
I won't. I pay wish I'd gotten that one face down with that intimidation. That was what I was saying. I was like, <laughs> you were one off on it. You were really close. And I was like, oh, I know, not that card. <laughs> uh, so I will play that, and then it's back to you for reactions. Okay. So it makes sense. You play an attack. I get to play all my defense cards. Mm -hmm. Then you actually have cards that reactions. react. And so that's yeah. very clean. I yep. like that a lot. Uh, I don't have any attack reactions. All right. So that'll resolve, and I'll take one. You'll take one. All right. Then I have a second action point to spend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to push forward the Romping Club, spending one resource that's floating, mm -hmm. and generating two more. So I currently have one floating. I'm not going to track it because it's not going to matter. Surprise. Uh, and then if I discarded a card with six or more attack, which I have, uh, it gains plus one. So it's a five damage attack coming at you. Which would be enough to take me off the table. It would be enough, yeah, if you were yeah, just out of cards. Right? I had no defensive cards at all. <laughs> Uh, so I will block with an Emerging Power Yellow. It's got three defense. Right on. Uh, and then I'll pass to you. Okay, no attack reactions for me. So you're going to deal Five two? minus three. Deal two. Down to three. Woo! Here we go. And then it's my turn. And I've got one in the arsenal, I'll yeah. get my Banished card back. <laughs> Man. And then I get to put these under in whatever order I please, which... Yeah. At some point in my life, it will matter. It will, someday. But it'll be about game 25. My, that's right. My red emerging power triggers. My first guardian attack is plus three. Oh, no. Prepare thyself. I hope I get to block with more than one. Uh, I will use Bravo's ability to gain dominate. Uh, Slagism's in blue is the one I'm using to generate resources. But check this out. I wish I'd drawn it earlier. It costs three. It says the next attack at card with cost two or greater. I play this turn gets plus four. Go Ooh. again. So like you can imagine if I had an emerging power into a turn where I play a slogism for you plus pay four. three to get plus four, basically. So then it would be seven. I could use the ability to make it where you only get block one if it's like my eight damage card. It's 15. You're pulling that oh, yes yeah. bat move in Smash Brothers, man. That's right. Uh, so I'll, I'll pay for this. So I have one floating. And then... Bubba, that's great. Shout to your uh, eight-year-old. Chris, the highest attack value that's been landed, I think Zach hit me for like eight. 11. Or 11. It, well, it was 11, you canceled three or four of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to play a Cartilage Crush. So it's a seven, but it's a Guardian attack, so it's doing 10. If it deals four or more damage, your first action costs you an extra resource next round. I had one floating, it cost me three. So I will pay another three, so then I still have one floating. So you're saying a 10 damage attack. Yep. And I can only use one card to defend. If you had that staunch defense, it would almost be enough. Like, because you could do five plus three is eight. Let me see nine, what I can 10, get to here. Uh, which would be enough to just cancel out the attack. Let me, let me read this to you. Um, okay. The one card from their hand. Okay. So let's just see if I can actually string it together. I'm not going to run the math. I'm just going to do it in front of you, and we'll see together. So these are not from my hand, so I can throw my two armor in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw my highest defense card in, which is five. Five versus ten would kill me. Do you have any attack reactions? I don't. <laughs> you're, you're putting in the Awakening Bell of Red. So it is three. I thought it was a five. I was like, you're close. You're like seven. All right. Don't so, forget your arsenal either if you have something magic. So then... We're playing a defense reaction, Springboard Somersault. It's going to be a defense of four additional, so I'm currently defending for nine. <laughs> Take one. Take one. Here we go. <laughs> and then my gear breaks. That was, that was a killer shot from Zach. And, uh, and the main thing here is I hope you don't draw a dominate. You better. I like it, Nick. I am a real American. All right. <clears throat> OK. How do we want to do this? Is there a way? Huh. Well, this is a good card. OK. I get this. To, OK. You've got three left. What kind of defense do you have, man? Well, the thing is, like, we're in that scrappy situation. This is very scrappy. The more you defend, the less you can attack. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, like, ideally, I could attack you and play dominate and make it where you just can't do anything. But, like, if you make me spend more, if I spend more than two cards to stay alive, I'm just getting my hammer. Here's a, here's a fun, check this move out. This is hilarious. I like this a lot. Yeah, you do have to pay for it if you if you play the defense reaction from the arsenal. You do have to pay for it. Springboard somersault is zero, and most of them are zero, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Check this is so fun. Oh, oh, hold on, things have changed. Fight for the rights of every man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, nameless. So this is exactly what we're talking about. He said this is so cool flavor-wise. They've completely destroyed each other's armor in this armor in this battle. So you can feel it, right? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's accomplishing, I think, story-wise and theme-wise what it's trying to accomplish, which is really cool. All right, fine. Do you, you know, do you, I don't know if this is right. You technically have the tempo, right? Yes. Because, like, you can force big attacks that make me discard cards, and you'll get to draw a full hand going into defense. But then next round, your attacks are going to be worse. This is your, this is your turn. Because, mm -hmm. like, if you're going to have to defend whatever I throw at you, and I'll get a fill back up. I, I'm having to I'm actually, so right now, I'm ha I only have three cards. So I'm, I'm actually playing for what's the best thing to have in my arsenal to potentially win next turn. Because I don't think I can beat it this turn. The best I can do is like six damage this turn. Uh, and it's like, I want to do six so that you have to at least throw a three defense is what I've seen as standard. So it would have to be two cards to not die. Yeah. But then if I do that six, that's also the card I want in my arsenal next turn because it gets better in my arsenal. Yeah. So it's like, basically, do you put the, do you, do you uh... And I've got to pay for it. Yeah. So but these two I want in my arsenal. This is the card I want to play. But these are the two cards that I want to not spend. So I can, so I have to choose which one do I want in my arsenal and which one do I want to generate. Resources. Resources. I'm going to go for the gusto here. Drone of Brutality Red. It's going to cost me two, so I'm going to flip up two resources. Three resources using Scour the Battlescape. So I generated three. I'm going to float one. And this is a six damage generic attack. If it would be put in my graveyard, I put it on the bottom of my deck instead. What's up, Tom McCall? No worries. This game looks near impossible to get my hands on in the UK. Is that all right? Well, we'll ship it to you, Tom. We've, we've got bundles and stuff. It's probably going to be, you know, 15 to 20 bucks in shipping uh, and whatever customs your uh, beautiful government is deciding to charge. But uh, we will ship it to you worldwide. And once we get that distribution hub in the UK, you're going to be rolling. Hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. Could be years, could be months, could be days. You know, you know how those things work, right? Hmm. I love it though, right? Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. it's it's you. You have to actually think a lot more than you think you do. I agree. This with that. is a this is a clever little game. Yes. You know how sometimes you play games and you're like, I definitely understand how I could get a thousand times better at this. And then sometimes you play Pokemon and you're like, I think I pretty much get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember. Yes, I do. All right, so that's all that matters. Okay. So... Yeah, Customs Thomas is awful. I'm going to block with five. Oh, there he is. Okay, so take one. Take one down, pass it around. Put one in my arsenal, draw four. All right, my turn. <laughs> and I, oh, and I, I put my pitch on the bottom. Steven, get it in your head. Looking for one. Looking for one, man. He won't find it. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use Bravo's oh my gosh. action. You better get it done this turn. I'm going to use Bravo's action. Uh, pay two. So I'll generate two and do that. It's not going to matter. I'm just trying to get that card over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay three for Anothos. Mm -hmm. So I have two, three cost or higher in here. So it's hitting for a six. Six. Yeah. But like the pressure you put on by making me defend, right? Yeah. Like I, I had. Just dominate. No. Just not. But mm. now I'm putting the pressure on you. Mm-hmm. Same, same thing. And the knowledge crystals. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let me let me work out my turn here. Uh, okay. 
So I definitely want to play this. And then I definitely want to play this. So I can defend with one of these. Oh, but I've got to generate resources. That is the balance. No. <laughs> oh, no. Vader style. Um, OK. Oof. That was the balance I was looking at, too. Because like I wanted to be able to attack, you know, for a relevant amount. Yes, I do know. But my two, like my two attacks on hand, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These my attacks two, are so my, close to each other, they're slightly different. And it's like, huh. What is optimal? I had two four-cost attacks. So there's no way for me to defend your attack and survive and also play an attack that wasn't a six. OK. I'm going to throw this in, defending for two. Yeah, there and it is. And we're going to somersault react out of sequence because I got excited for four more. So I'm going to block six. You got it. Okay. These go on the bottom. I'll draw me a hand and hope for another staunch defense. <laughs> I hope not. I am a... Uh... Congrats, Ross. TFA is awesome. All right, Zach, here we go. It's either going to happen now or never. How about never? Barraging beatdown. My next brute attack is defended by less than two non-equipment cards is plus three. So defend with two or more cards. All right. And immediately triggers intimidate. So I'll take one of those to your banish pile. This one. Mm. And then it has go again. OK. So I have to defend with two, or you get plus three. And it costs zero, so I don't have to make any money. Cranky. That's right. <laughs> then, <laughs> this is so brutal. We're just fighting on the ground right now. Yeah, I know. I'll play Savage Feast. Cost me one, so I'll generate two here with a Smash Instinct. Okay. Float one. Oh, no, wait, I can't do that. I've got to reverse that. Then I'll play Smash Instinct and generate one resource with Savage Feast. To pay. No, I can't do that either. I have failed. You want to rethink your roll, life? Roll the, roll the turn back. Roll it back. I wasn't. Is, is this back in my hand? Yes. Whatever the, you did to do that. The random discard I wasn't counting. So uh, now I, as a cost. I got to go back to yeah. big brain time here. Um, so if we do this. I, I thought I had just lost, but now I'm feeling more confident. Now you may well not have. <laughs> yeah. There's a combination of cards here that could definitely. Don't you always feel like you're one card short? Win, yes. That's great design. Beautifully one card short. It's the resource. Ugh. Yeah. Indeed. Oh my gosh. OK, so I'm going to do this. J Judge. <laughs> this. That's a thing in a tournament where it's like, oh no, I just lost on that. I just lost, yeah. But we aren't a tournament. OK, this is what I need to do. This, pay for it here, this. OK, let's do that. So we're going to play. Savage Feast cost me one. It's going to be this. It's going to leave me one resource floating. So I'm paying for it with a two generator, and it cost me one. Red Savage Feast. As an additional card, discard a random card. It's a six attack smash instinct. If the discarded card has six or more, I intimidate with that ability. And this card, Savage Feast, says I get to draw a card. Hmm. Could be good. And now you get to defend as you like. How much is it doing? It is doing six damage. Well, I can't have that, now can we? <laughs> yeah, Emilio, the arsenal is the key. I think that's right. Block with six. Blocking with six? I got to. All right, attack reactions, I have none. Canceled. 
Put this in my arsenal. There it is. Everything goes away. This comes back. This goes under, and I draw up to my hand size. <laughs> All right, two card hand. Good luck. You can, I mean, I've been on that the whole time, right? It's yep. like I think you can keep forcing it, and I don't know how to get out. You're still on two health to my one. <laughs> Land any amount of damage is how you get out of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, I can keep scrapping around here, right? Or I think what I have to do is not attack and literally put an arsenal down. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have to build a bigger, I, bigger turn. Yeah, I'm with it. Uh, Kevin saying, Kevin has been clustering lockdown. Thanks so much, Kevin. Uh, Jay asking, do you ever get replacement gear? As far as I know, you don't. There could be a mechanic in the game that's either on cards we don't have or will be introduced later on, but currently not. Uh, Kaya saying, I'd be going insane without these streams. Well, that's awesome, guys. We, uh, we, it's an honor to be here and, and just to have the, the audience that we okay. do on the daily. I mean, over 200 people watching right now is just awesome. Let's do this. It's, it's young Zach and Steven's freaking playing the dream. Pipe dream. Anothos for oh, four. What? That's rude. Oh my gosh, how devastatingly awful is that? Well, I've only got three defenses in my hand, man. You gotta spend two of them. That's what I started figuring this out. Is is like, unless you have a four, the hammer's gonna make you use two cards anyway. And then I'm basically gonna get this card down in my arsenal. And next round is the round where I can possibly intimidate you and play a big attack and force through the damage if I survive. But it's good, it's a good scrum. Okay. I am a real American. Okay. Oh my gosh, I hate it. <laughs> Why did you do this? Appreciate these comments, Jared and Kevin. Mm. I've decided one health is the worst health. It's a bad, it's a bad amount of health, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, we've got a good crack at this, at least. Okay, so... Wait just a minute. Oof. Dang it. Okay. Uh, Drat. Three and three. You did it. You stopped my hammer. Oh, that was awful. Then I'll put this card in my arsenal. Let's Here's flip. a question that I don't know on the arsenal. Can you clear it out, like, if you want to put a different card there and you already have one, or is it stuck there forever? I feel like it's stuck, which is kind of the whole point of the game. Yeah. Not the whole point. Now, the thing is, if you'd had your springing death trap again, yeah, I know It'd that would have been the perfect time for it. It would be absolutely great. I'll look this up, but I'm not going to spend too much time because I'm going to guess that somebody's going to have the answer to me on the arsenal. Okay. Love hearing this, Chris. Chris Chandler says, really enjoying the streams and hanging out with you guys. It's, co it's consequently encouraged me to try out a few new games. They're old games, actually. Yeah, those throwbacks will get you. Physics arsenal says, is arsenal stuck, stuck there, yeah. Nathan, you're right. It's like Rocky versus Ivan Drago. That's how it feels. Like I'm just, I've been on one for like four turns in a row. Like I just yeah. need a little more punch. Yeah. But I think this also highlights the fundamentals of the game, right? Most defense cards are three. A twos and threes are all common. And if you're swinging for six, which is a pretty normal amount of damage, being five or six, it's going to take your opponent two cards to block all the damage. So when you get in these scenarios where you have to block all the damage, it's basically taking two cards out of their hand. Early on, what you get away with is like, I'll take two or three damage, and that, that lets you use one card for blocking, right? You kind of set up a bigger play. Mm -hmm. But when you're down to the scrum and you have to prevent from taking the damage, it's a whole new ball game. This turn is turning ugly. Ugly good. I just, I just punted my arsenal, basically. I need to get this out of here so I can actually do something meaningful next turn. Okay, so if I do this, oh man, it's so tough. Ah, it's so unfortunate. All right, I've got to do it. And Appreciate I hate that, it. Kaya. Absolutely hate it. 
All right, playing a Wrecker Romp Blue from my arsenal. It's a six damage attack, additional cost, discard a random card. I will generate three resources from a Primeval Bellow, and that's gonna leave me one floating. And I discard a random card. It's a six attack. Take an Intimidate from Reinar's ability. I am a real man. And then six damage coming at you. So I just have to block six. You got to block six? And then I have to be able to take the, the ball past the goal line, as they say. Kaya, that's great. I tell everyone about TC. I've been watching for almost there, six years. There were some really good comments. Just gets better. You were very focused, which is good. All right. I will block for six. Okay. I drew disabled, by the way. It's a five cost, nine damage attack. Uh, but that's the only way I can not die here. Oh, good. I wish you had grabbed this card to put here. And not the other. <laughs> All right. Blocking mm. for six. Consider it done. Mine? Yeah. Prepare to die. Here I comes think, the I hammer. Think so. Yeah, I don't have arsenal. I don't have a springboard trick. I got nothing. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pay for Bravo's action. Uh, until the end of the turn, my attack actions that cost three or greater gain dominate. Go again. So then I'll play for my arsenal a barraging Bronhide blue. <laughs> Five, if you don't block with at least two cards against plus one, you can I only block with that. one, so it's going to be a six, and I'll pay for it here. So it's a six, you get one card. Oh my gosh. This hand. Do you have the, you have the, do you have the five defense with the plus three? This hand is so funny. Hold on, i gotta, I got to look up something real quick. <laughs> All right, tell me... Instance. I believe instance can be played at any. Okay. Uh, the chain, yeah. Active player may play instant cards as additional layers on the chain, or they may pass priority. Good. Okay. Good. So instance you can play at any point in any resolution. Check this out. This is absolutely bonkersly hilarious. Zach. Hit me with it. For my defense card. Mm hmm. I will, yeah, I know. Edge of your seat, right? <laughs> Kai says uh, that we're the only thing good about Oklahoma. Uh, oh, wow. Just kidding. Uh, someone says about the weather. So, the weather, we have all four seasons. Uh, there's like a month or two in the summer that's <laughs> miserable hot, and there's a month or two in the winter where it's really cold. Uh, but that also means we get rain and snow and fall and spring. And uh, I, I like the rotation of the seasons, but that's not necessarily for everybody. It's currently six minus three. Mm hmm. Okay. Then we go to the attack reactions. Do you have any attack reactions? Nope. Mm -mm. All right, defense reactions. Uh -huh. I'll pay zero to play a springboard somersault for two more defense. Okay. It doesn't count as the plus two because it's not from my arsenal. Mm -hmm. Then I'll play an instant. Come on. Gain one life. No. That's fantastic. <laughs> And you had to use all the way down to one card for that, so I'll approve. Then I'll take one damage and somehow not die. So you survive, but can he win? Because <laughs> now the interesting thing is like, do I put this in the arsenal or do I just swing with my romping club for four? See, that, that was a mistake I made. I spent two turns early just throwing everything I had at you. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be able to cover that up, right? But it, four usually gets two cards out of your hand. Yeah, but then the question is, can I beat you with two cards? I don't know. I have a full hand. Yeah, it's unlikely. You probably that I can, can't dominate, right? I that's the thing. But you could also throw down a three, take one damage, and then have three cards going in. Because most of your defenses are probably threes, if they're like my deck, which seems to be the common number. Would be good, would it not? <laughs> All right, I'm going to play it cool, man. You've got, you've got tempo now, so I'm going to give it. I'm going to give you the money. Seed the tempo. I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to draw my four. So I'm in the arsenal. And let me make sure this is even worth having in the arsenal. It absolutely is. Go for it. All right. Yeah, Dominate, Jay's got it right. As far as I understand it, Jared, Dominate is just when you're playing defense cards, but any defense reactions are still cool. The, how We've been stuck at like this downtown brawl for... It, 20 turns. And I can't play a defense reaction from Arsenal? Yes, you can. Okay, that's the exception. You just can't play a standard defense uh, okay. using, you can't use the shield. Not that I think we're going to get to that. As phase. standard. Oh, I mean, that's a good sign. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Uh, all right, I, I, I actually don't think we'll get to that phase, but we'll see. You pulled some crazy stuff. 
I'll use action. Uh, my three cost cards gain dominate. Go again with Bravo. That's not a good sign. And then I have one, right one floating <laughs> resource. I'll play a buckling blow. It costs four. I have one floating. I'll spend three more. So now it's a. Uh, I paid for it. It's an eight, <laughs> and it's got it's got dominate. So you can only play one card. Yeah, I can't string that together, man. Good game. I got a. No one smashes hammers like Gaston. That's right. Uh, got a lot. I got a good turn coming up next. Stringing together this intimidate this really seems to be the key. Um, and I think playing out of the, I needed early on to be playing my discard a card from your hand. I needed to put those in my arsenal, so that I don't have the basically have an extra card that gets discarded that turn. Because mm -hmm. what I found was like a four card hand, play a card, generate a resource, discard for intimidate. Leaves you one card. To leaves me one card, yeah. and then it's it, like unless that one card is something you want to put in your arsenal, like mm -hmm. if it's that phase. But otherwise, I think leveraging the arsenal to have five card turns is is a critical piece of the pie. That was great. You want to try two other characters? Yeah, yeah. I think we we pull out the other starters. All right, let's pull um, out for a second here. I, I like come up for air. That was excitingly good. That was really that was a good scrum. I feel like that one game, and obviously we've played it before now. But that one game, I appreciate what's going on so much more than I did yes. last time. Yes. I yes. also like. I, I I didn't expect it, but I like the. Uh, Basically, try the young hero first. Yeah, it just makes it a cleaner, faster game. You get to the that that moment way faster. Much faster. Um, so I dig that. Very cool. Let's very, put very this cool. away. While we're here, um, I'll show you. I'll just lay these out. Uh, we've got a booster box bundle going on, set one and two. This is the phase of the game where they're like, you go do something fun and they trap you in a room and market to you. Um, it's not a pyramid scheme. <laughs> it's not a pyramid scheme, I swear. You've seen it that looks like office, a pyramid, right? But it, and so yes. Michael's like, it's not a pyramid. <laughs> Jim goes and draws up on the thing, and then he's like, uh, he knows what he's talking about. He's got a Corvette, and then Jim draws it, and he's like, I need to go make a call real quick. <laughs> um, I'll throw us in here. So these are the, we have eight of these uh, weapon promos. These here are from the first set, uh, Welcome to Wraith, and these here are from the second set, Arcane Rising. Uh, these are the random promos we're giving away in our, our booster box bundle. So it's one of set one, one of set two, and then two random weapons. But if you buy two of those bundles where you would get four random promos, we will make sure that you don't get the same promo twice. Yeah, you also get a random promo, promo associated with a set you're buying. So like if yes. you buy a set one, set two bundle, you would get one from each of these rows. Right on. Um, and then if you buy two bundles, you're guaranteed to get four different. So like yeah. two from this, two from this. If you happen to just like want to go, you're like, all right, this is it. This is my <laughs> life now. This is my game. <laughs> I've uh, been admitted this is my life. <laughs> you buy four bundles, you're guaranteed to get uh, eight, all eight promos. So we won't dupe you up uh, actively unless, now the, the only exception is if you place like, you buy yeah. a bundle now and then two weeks later you buy a bundle again. We don't have any way to, you know, make that right so it will be a randomization process again so you might get doubled up if you place two separate orders but if it's all in the same order we will do what we can and what we can is absolutely guarantee that they will not be uh, doubled up in that one order and uh, these are beautiful cards I, I, I've been a long time since I've actually seen really nice shiny things and I gotta tell you Zach it takes me right back to the <laughs> The old the, collector's the, bill. The early brain, yeah. This is cool. I didn't realize this is what was happening. So I'm going to use the harmonized Kadachi. Uh, and he it's a two. You can have it it's one-handed. So I get two of them. You get two of them. So now i got to find two of those. Get in. And Jesse asking, if you buy five bundles, you get a dupe. If you buy five bundles, yes. Uh, you'll get one of every promo, and then two will kind of start over, and two random. Uh, and we'll give you a hug. Because five bundles is a crazy it's amount of money that we're very excited for you to be yeah. uh, uh, hey, spending with us. This is actually really, there's some cool comments. Baba says, I've basically traded my Kickstarter addiction for TC subscriptions. It feels <laughs> much better. Oh, that's good. Uh, but then uh, Chris Ainsworth says, can you share more about the rarity aspect of the cards? This is actually really uh, worth mentioning. Take yeah, it over there. Uh, so essentially, the Flesh and Blood is not afraid of rarity and collectability. Um, and I think they are basically doing this down the line uh, about how I would want anybody to do it. So there's common, uncommon, and rare. That's standard uh, thing. Um, but then there's super rare. There was super rare and majestic. And so super rare was basically one in six packs. Majestic in the first set, Welcome to Wraith, was one in 12 packs. So booster boxes have 24 packs in them. In a booster box, you would expect to get two majestics, four super rares, and then the rest would be standard rares. Uh, but then they also have uh, what are called Fabled and Legendary. Let me just pull this little chart up. 
Um, and so, basically, Super Rares are 1 in 6, Modex 1 in 12. Legendary are 1 in 96 packs. So it's about four boxes. Every four boxes. That's a, they, they actually came, you can see boxes back there. A case of these is, is four boxes, so I assume there's literally one of these in every case. Uh, and then they have fabled cards, uh, which <laughs> were next layer. So the, in the second set, or the third set, Chris Ward. What is a fabled card? How, how rare is that? So technically, nobody really knows, right? Well, or do they? I think when I was reading on the official article, or do they not even exist? They could just be fabled. Right? Oh my goodness, what does that even mean? <laughs> uh, let me. Where is it at? Oh, I have to go back to it. Um, so all this sounds complicated. It's really not. Uh, don't 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 lose. Don't let me lose you here. But uh, let me find. It's like it. when Grandpa goes uh, in to like you know try to figure out Excel. It's like or PowerPoint. Can you just? Yeah, it's like, what's happening? Just have one of your kids do uh, it. But basically, what, what I was reading earlier is Fabled is also, it's 196. Is what really? that is. Yeah. Oh. That, that, that is the legendary. Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't think it's a, there's a separate thing. So maybe there are Fabled legendaries? But what happens is, like, um, there are certain cards that, like, they, they short print intentionally, which sounds bad, but it's actually a good thing. So what that means is, like, if there's a card you could actually play three of um, in a rarity slot, so even just, like, a regular rare, uh, but there's equipment that you can only play one of, or a character you can only play one of. Uh, the one of cards you will see at a rate of one to three to the standard three of cards that you could play. So what that means is that if you buy you know, a couple boxes of cards, you're not going to end up, I've done this in card games a billion times, where it's like in Destiny, I would only ever play one of this character, but it is as rare as every other rare in the set, so you end up with a bunch extra of that and then not the other way around. So in the same way with the legendary, like I think the first set had five different legendary equipment pieces, and so the legendaries that are really hard to get, um, like one per case. If there's five, that means you have to go through five cases to to even have a chance at getting all five of those. Um, you can, one, you can only play one of them in your list, so you only need one. But it's printed in a way like they wouldn't do a legendary like that that you needed three of. Right. Because then that would just be obnoxious. But you don't need to collect three of yeah. one legendary card, right? Yeah. It's all like equipment and weapons is what it would be primarily, which makes sense. It kind of gives you that like MMO thing where you're kind of like trying to find that awesome sword that you want to use. I haven't felt that since I was a child because uh, I, I had access to more resources, right? So I could buy a little bit more and make sure. And then we started playing LCGs. But and somebody said in the chat uh, that Fable is one in 960 packs, which I seem to remember from somewhere as well. Is that still the case? Do I mean, you know? I, I don't. Uh, Maybe that's Fable. Maybe we just don't know. And that, that might be which the case. I like. uh, if if that's true, that's interesting. It, it also like the thing about it too, which I like, is that in a lot of games, like Magic as an example, um, we talk about Magic a lot for people that really always never played it. Yeah, well, you know, or Pokemon is a yeah. good example. Yeah. But in Pokemon, it's like, I remember when I got that Charizard for the first time, and you could technically play four of that Charizard in your deck. Um, and that card was crazy yeah. hard to get. It was, it was like, that one card particularly, it was just a rare. But it was like one in ten booster boxes or something. Um, and players needed or wanted or would be willing to have two, three, four copies of it. So that just made it even even more of an issue. Also, Lion Day is saying the, the truth here. Even though they're super rare, they're not needed to play your character well, they might help give you a little extra edge, which is very cool. And then all legendaries and those, uh, those rare cards are foils. All the legendaries at least are. I don't know if the, the rares probably aren't. The Majestics, I, I bet, would always be foil. Or maybe not. Are the Majestics always foil? you have any idea? I don't know. I we'll see when we start opening, right? Yeah. And then in... Crucible of War, which is the next set, and I believe just moving forward in general, super rares are cut, so there's no longer a super rare slot. The Majestics and super rares came together. Yeah, you get six Majestics per box on average, and it, like Destiny it was. It used to be four Majestics, or four super rares, two Majestics. Mm -hmm. So they've just become one thing moving forward. So if I bought... If you bought a case... Is that six boxes? Four I'm boxes. I'm not buying a case. Four boxes. I'll never buy a case. So a case okay, is four boxes. four boxes. Okay. So if you bought four boxes, you would expect to get one of the legendary cards. Okay. Then okay. you would get 24 Majestics, and then you would get the rest are just standard rares. Okay. Right? Cool. I love it. Example of a fabled card, Robert, I'd love to know. Is that Spring Tunic thing, is that a fabled card? I can't tell. I don't know. <laughs> Kaya, the Pokemon stream broke me. I've bought so much Pokemon <laughs> since then. 
We're gonna open some packs. We're also gonna do some. We may do some sealed to finish off the stream today. Which I think that's super what we're gonna, fun. Gonna lean towards. Uh, but that's where, like, the thing about that too, which I think is cool, if all these really, really hard to get cards are the things that start here. By the I've way. done this backwards. It's, it's already happened. <laughs> it's it's your deck. You can do what you want. But it's just wrong, though. It's um, so if they start out here, the one thing that's really cool, and like it, it even thematically makes a little bit of sense, which is like if you end up if I play against cards, I remember playing Pokemon as a kid that I literally don't own and can't yeah. reasonably just own. Like, what is that? It's like it is actually legendary, right? It's like it's like. Uh, I'm thinking about like Rhaegar's armor in Game of Thrones, right? If it was as rare as it is in Universe, and it was like a special thing to even see it, and I, I think the they're leaning into it in a good way, and that like it is good, and you want to play it if you get it. They don't want it to be bad, but at the same time, it's not so good that you can't win without it. Right. Right. It's, it's, right. it's like a one percent change in quality, not like a fifty percent change, which I think is important for them to do. It it can be silly stuff like. Uh, maybe the normal version blocks one, and then the legendary version blocks two, which doesn't break a game. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. It's just a little, just a little boost. We'll see. I mean, it could go sideways. It's really easy to start getting weird with legendaries and have like things that are required for players to collect to actually play in a competitive scene. Yeah, I've heard of this one. Eye of Aphidia. That, was a, that was a card I had seen. Oh yeah, that's Jonathan's a, that's a really, it up right now. that's a really. Oh my gosh, one. it's gorgeous. This is yeah. the prettiest game. This is just the prettiest game. I would almost be willing to pay for a booster box, open the cards, and just frame them. Like, look at them. They look good. I mean, it's that it's that kind of an experience for me. All right, hey, I'm gonna read down my cards real quick. I'm playing Katsu. This is the Ninja Let's Hero in, Young Jeff. version. He has a four intellect, 20 health, like standard, once per turn. When an attack action card you control hits, I can discard a card that costs zero. If I do, search my deck for a card with combo, banish it, then shuffle my deck. You may play it this turn. Good luck. Yeah. You're the combo player now. You're a ninja combo man. Banish it face up, then I can shuffle my deck, then I play it. Uh, then he has the Harmonized Kadachis. Uh, once per turn action, spend one for an attack. It does one damage. It's This is like a little ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh, if I have a card in my pitch zone with cost zero, it gains go again. So essentially I can slash you twice uh, in the same turn, and then he also can search his deck for plus one. I also have the Iron Rot Helmet, of course that just prevents one. I have Standard. The Breaking Scales, looks like my scabbard. Uh, attack reaction, destroy Breaking Scales, target attack action gain, card with combo gains plus one. Very nice. Battle Worn, after I defend with it, it gets minus one. Heartened Cross Strap, action, destroy Heartened Cross Strap, the next attack action I play this turn co that costs two or less uh, to play gains go again. And mm -hmm. then Iron Rod Legs to break one. So he's just a uh, slashing and attacking. He's a slashing and a slashing. Then we have Dorinthia. Uh, this is probably my favorite character out of the uh, first set. We've got the Dawn Blade. It's a warrior, so this is just the straight up warrior versus ninja is what we're playing here. And Dorinthia has when your weapon attack hits, you may attack an additional time with that weapon this turn. Now, it doesn't mean that I get to go again. It means that if I have go again, I can use the weapon twice. I. I really like Dorinthia. And the Dawn Blade particularly. Over Dorinthia? I mean we can both play it. We'll just that's what's cool though. We can have our own version of it. The the from where I'm sitting, the the cold foil version of Dawn Blade. Just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Makes me it's Does not make you hurt. Anger, make you sweat. Anger is not the right feeling. Make you sweat. I don't know. It's like a like it's frustratingly good. Okay. Anyway. Good morning, David Wiffle. Good to see you. Dawn Blade. It's a once per turn action, one resource attack. So this is just a really easy attack. If it hits, and it's the second time it's hit that turn, I get that plus one counter. And then at the beginning of the end phase, if I did not hit, I remove all. So I'm trying to ramp with double attacks to make this blade stronger and stronger well, and stronger. Well, and what's crazy is that the Dawn Blade, it costs one to do a three damage attack. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it doesn't have go again. No, it doesn't. So you're going to have to play cards that give you go again. I'm, What's her ability set? I'm, it just means, this only means that when I hit with my weapon, I can use it again. So it says once per turn action attack. Technically, it's twice per turn if I hit, because you, I'm using Dorinthia. Okay, so you're probably looking for other, your other ways to slash. But here's the crazy thing. What if there's warriors printed in the future that don't have that ability? So Dawnblade is functioning a little bit differently for them if they want to take it. Sure. So maybe I can use somebody, somebody uses Dawnblade that's not Dorinthia, maybe they use it a little bit differently. What's right? interesting too is like Dorinthia could take the harmonized Kadachis just as much as Katsu can. 
right? No, ninja, no, ninja weapons. weapon. Okay, got it. So but they, any that's future important. ninjas could. They have classes, yes. right? And this is, if you look at the decks, like this is the Dorenthia box. On the back it says warrior and it has a nice little paragraph mm -hmm. about the warriors. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are classes of cards, and we'll get to that when we're opening the booster packs. They, they laid those things out in a clever way. And it's, again, at every turn, you just see that there's intentionality behind this game. Somebody was thinking about this for seven years is what it feels yes. like. Yes, which yeah. is cool. Very cool. Like my marriage. Um, all right, so then we've got the standard Iron Rot played Iron Rot Gauntlet. We dated for eight years, I think, before we got married. I was going to say, it was not seven years yeah. ago. I think it was eight. Eight 20, years, 20, and then we got married. 2016? No, 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 I mean like... I know, your actual... Oh, I don't know when I got... I, uh, three years? Four years now? 27. Three years, four years? Oh, hi. Shannon, you watching? Oh, well, hey, Shannon. Hey, I know Good everything. Good to see you. I've got it on my calendar. Hope Merchant's Hood on the uh, top of my head there. Destroy it. <laughs> Shuffle any number of cards from your hand into your deck and draw that many. So you get a full mulligan. Okay. And then Refraction Bolters. When your weapon attack hits, destroy them. Get, go, again. All right. So this is one way that I can use the Dawnblade I like twice. those refraction I'm bolters. definitely running the best boots in this stream. You definitely have had superior boots. I'm running those boots. OK, and now, do you want to see who goes first? Yeah. High roll? Ooh, I haven't seen most of these cards. <laughs> yeah, Nathan, sorry. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not good with memories. Twelve. I, I, I always say that I am not good with memories because I'm living in the moment. Mm. That's convenient. Uh, I, I rolled higher, so that means I go first? Sure. Or you can choose. That's I don't fine. know if there's, let's an, go there's first. an official rule, I'm sure. Let's, let's just do it. Six. Six. Oh, wow. Big kid now? Huh. This is fascinating. Totally different cards, right? Can I have health about beyond my 20? Yes, you can. Expressly in the rules. This is the strangest turn of events. <laughs> you ready for this? I'm so ready. Huh. Okay, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> I've been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That's been the, so it was, The Office was like the 2000s thing, right? Mm -hmm. I watched that, I watched that a lot. Then, did you ever do Arrested Development? I haven't yet. I, I need to watch it, but Parks and Rec was the next one that kept getting recommended, so we watched Parks and Rec. And I went forever. My brother Tim kept saying, you have to watch Parks and Rec. And I was like, I don't know. Then we watched it and I loved it, right? Yep. And then forever he was, the saying, pocket, he was saying, he was saying, you have to watch Brooklyn Nine Nine. I was yeah. like, I don't know, like, ah. and then I finally watched it, and now I think it's hilarious. And did you do Thirty Rock? No, you haven't seen Thirty Rock. No, I'll do any. I'll watch anything with Tina Fey in it, man. <laughs> Literally anything. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Yep, I am ready. All right, baby. I am ready. All right, I'm gonna use my first harmonized Kadachi. Once per turn action, spend a resource, attack. If I have a card in my pitch zone with a cost zero, Harmonized Kadachi gains go again. So I will pay for it with a Sigil of Solace, which costs zero, but it's it almost like three. it's designed to work like that. It's crazy. So oh I'm doing a gosh. one one damage attack at you. Oh, man. Uh, also, Jeremy asking, uh, interesting, you never really played Magic. I played a little bit as a kid, uh, just very casually. Um, first, what was our first card game? Started with Pokemon, yeah. and then there was a, kind of a Dragon Ball thing, and then the first real one we hammered on was Star Wars TCG. Yeah, we kind of leveled Wizards. up to that. So, like, I was a little young for Magic, um, and it would not have been allowed in my household. So uh, I played Pokemon, and that's how Steve and I really met, and then did, like, Dragon Ball Z TCG and also Lord of the Rings TCG from Decipher and dabbled in the Star Wars TCG from Decipher. But then when the Star Wars TCG from Wizards came out is when we went to the next next level. We're so older, like 13, 14. Uh, I'm not, uh, well, I'm going to get them back, right? I get to draw more. Yeah, you so... do. So that's a roll. The first end of the first round, we just draw back up. But, uh, nah, it just feels like I'm wasting my time here. Do you have anything that makes it stronger on the board? Not currently. OK. Uh, I'm going to block with three. OK. So you block it. I have no reactions to that. Yeah. OK. So then. I'll spend play. another resource to use my other Kadachi. Mm -hmm. Down to you one. Can, you can go again again. And it's a one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll take one. All right. No, no defense. Do you have any attack uh, reactions? No, you're just, okay. just paying it. When it hits, I can... Oh, now you tell me. Sorry. Once return <laughs> effect. When <laughs> attack action card I control... Oh, it's not a card, so we'll get there. Uh, then I'm going to play a blue head jab. It's a one damage attack that has go again. 
Why do you keep doing these? I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chop. <laughs> you going down? Ah, uh, no. Don't care. Take one. This is how you lose. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll react uh, with Katsu's once per turn effect. When attack action, I control hits. I can discard a card with a cost of zero. If I do, search my deck for a card with combo in it. Banish it face up. Shuffle. Then I can play this card this turn. Okay. So I will discard another head jab that I could have played. I don't know what I'm getting. I'm just totally going in dark. Is this banished? I discard that card to get a card from my deck that has combo in it. Mm -hmm. Banish that, but I can play it this but turn. But you can play it. Okay. So it doesn't count for hand size, and you can't pitch it, presumably, I would guess, from the banish zone. Uh, Doug, yes, we have a go again from the first attack because it, the little uh, sword here says if you have a card in your pitch zone with cost zero, it gains go again. And I had and the blue Sigil of Solace. Zach started with Sigil of Solace, which is cost zero. Um, Thomas, will we play Magic nowadays? I, it's kind of a part of our identity at this point, honestly. Like, we grew up, we grew up in opposition to to a lot of Magic centric things in the the industry um, and we kind of liked the more alternative games at the time and we were getting shoved out of stores to make way for magic tournaments all of our lives so um, it's nothing against the game i think the game is great uh, or the community as a whole it's just that we've been indie for so long indie uh, whatever that looks like as in not magic not Yu Gi Oh, a little bit of pokemon early but we kind of dropped out as quickly as we got in um, that, yeah, I, just, I think just like some of these lesser known things are just way more interesting to us. We built the whole company around that, right? Yeah. If you look at what Covenant's done throughout the years, it's it's typically just been like, can we discover these diamonds in the rough? And, and part of that was like growing up, we were, were always starting with Pokemon, kind of the second game. Mm -hmm. So stores would kick you off tables and they didn't really care about your game and stuff. And so like we kind of had a rough hand trying to build communities and play games in areas that weren't necessarily wanting that. So then Covenant was really about like, just supporting the games we wanted to support. Oh, you know what? Are you are you doing this now? What the, that, Did I already take that damage? Yeah. Okay. I just yeah, forgot I, to have my gear. It's like, well, these are one. So I succeeded from the damage, which mm -hmm. let me trigger my ability cool. to go get a combo. And now I'm learning what this guy does. So this is really cool. So basically... Yeah, Thomas, how rebellious. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> all, all my combo cards basically reference other attack cards. Yep. So like the one I started look because I was like, and no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Uh, there's this card which is open the center red, and it says combo if the, if head jab was the last attack this combat chain, uh, open the center gains plus one attack go again and dominate. Very nice. So that was the last attack, and that's actually the chain. We you can just start stay on that. it. Yeah, that, yeah. that should stay there. Mm -hmm. So then the next card I'm gonna play is open the center cost two. I only have one here, so I'll generate another three. Hmm. And now I've got a bunch extra that I'm not going to use, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, you're reading your armor. Quit reading your armor. Nothing over there you need to worry about. You just give a combo okay, plus one? We're good, we're good. Basically, if you destroy that? If I, and I want the defense first, okay. so we'll, we'll deal. So now I've got a five damage attack coming at me. And I that can... has dominate as well, so you can only play one card. I've got the perfect response. Okay, great. I'm going to play, wait, oh, I need to read the cards. <laughs> okay. uh, welcome to card games. Oh, man. Blake says, since you guys did a starter theme podcast last week, how do you feel about the starter experience so far in Flesh and Blood? These hero decks are phenomenal. This is phenomenal. I, I feel like this deck was well constructed. I, not knowing at all what I was just doing, I just did that. Mm -hmm. Like, I understood, I f found the combo thing, it has the pieces. I immediately know what this deck's trying to do. I don't feel like I'm playing like a weaker version of the game or anything. I mean, well, I don't know what the, the Super Saiyan version looks like, but we'll get there. I at least don't feel like it. Okay, I'm gonna spend a six uh, cost. Oh, I've got a, yeah, six cost on the defense there. Six defense. Six defense, that's right. Does that cost you money to play? Uh, I don't think so. I think if I wanna play it, I would activate the, if it yeah, defends yeah, yeah, a weapon yeah, yeah, attack, deal a damage, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I can always just use the, uh, Okay. Use the shield. Now, I, I, should probably, I should probably make sure that's true. There might be a rule where defense reactions always have to be paid for to mm. get there to, to, to play them. them at all. I, that feel, honestly, that feels right, but it also does convolute just a little bit, the idea that you can just look in your hand and 
And see, so I'm gonna look up defense, right? And then see if somebody gets it for me. Bangarang says, you can't use defense reactions for shields. You cannot defend. Ah, the defending hero can defend with any number of non-defense reaction cards from their hand. Nailed it. But I can pay for that anyway. That's yeah, because you're gonna refill your hand. Uh, I'll pay for it here with this one. Okay, so you block for six. Block for six. If it was a weapon attack, I could deal one back to you, but it's not a weapon attack. It's a, uh, nice. a card. Very cool. The art, what's that card right there? Razor Reflex. It's red Razor Reflex. That is one of my favorite arts that I've seen on a card in a long time. I love that. I can't tell you how much I love that. Okay, uh, that's all I got. So my chain ends. All these go away. These go back to the bottom of my deck in the order of my choice. And because it's the first turn of the game, both players get to draw back up. Normally, it's just the active player. Hmm. <laughs> OK, so I'm basically going to look for, like, I need moments where I go twice. OK. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's a great card, and that art, also good. Oh my gosh, great. I love this card. Love the idea. Okay, so let's do this. Then this. Then, got to make sure I have the money, right? This, this. Tom, I totally agree. It says, seems like this would be excellent as a sealed tournament where your hero has picked up random equipment during their adventure. So I think after this game, we're going to play a round of sealed because the packs, the booster packs are kind of built for that. And I get excited about that because, like, the turbo drafting for Transformers was one of my favorite things about that game. The ability to just open a couple packs and play um, and have a unique experience. So if that's true here, I think this, the sealed value on these, uh, this game is just, like, in insanely high. And I think the, like, cube drafting ability of this would be super cool, too. Hmm. What up, John? Oh. Ah. You're seeing the light, right? It's cool. This is not at all what I should be doing, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to play a blue sharpened steel. My next weapon attack this turn gains plus one, and I get to go again. Just plus one to my you weapon attack. What could go wrong there? Then I'm going to... Oh, this goes under T. Play Nature's Path Pilgrimage Blue. It's going to cost me one. So I'm going to pitch a Sigil of Sala to generate three. So I've got two floating. Okay. And it says my next weapon attack gains plus one. If it hits and I have no cards in my arsenal, reveal the top card of my deck. If it's an action card, put it into my arsenal. And it has go again. So I'm currently at plus two. And if I hit, then I get to put a card from the top of the deck onto my arsenal, assuming that it works. Hitting for five, eh? Not even hitting yet. There's not even attacks yet. Oh. These are just actions. Okay, Stack yeah, it. go ahead. Then I'm going to pay one mm -hmm. to swing with Dawnblade. It's currently a five damage. If it hits, I'll have the ability to attack with it again. I won't have go again. Yeah, and you'll get a token, right? No, only the second attack generates a token. Mm -hmm. Currently to five, you say. Currently a five. That's right. Currently a five. Mm. Yep. I will not do anything. Nothing. Nothing. Ooh. All right. Take five. Uh, wait. I may have some things. Okay. So, uh, when your weapon attack hits, I can destroy this to give the attack go again. So it has hit. I'm going to destroy this. I should have used it first on one of those early attacks, but this is the learning process. So it now has go again, and then you take five damage. I, yeah, okay. take five damage. Then I'm going to resolve this whole Nature's Path pilgrimage. I'm going to reveal the top card of my deck. It's a Biting Blade Red. It is an action. No, it's not an action, is it? If it's an action card, put it face down in your arsenal. It's a reaction card. Mm, denied. Mm. The value. The value. All right, so Dorinthia, I can attack twice the Dawnblade. I gave the attack, go again. I've got one resource floating. Paying one to swing with the Dawnblade a second time. If this one hits at three, 
Well, we can't allow I that. I will get a token. No, can we? Now, Smart Money hits with the Dawn Blade, does a three attack early, and then I do everything I just did on the second attack. To get a big old attack in. That's what I would have done, yeah, differently. Yeah, As I, in, you had to hit to get go again, though, right? Yes. So if I block the first... That's, that's true. That's actually worse. That's actually true. Yes, you're right. All right, I will block with a three. All right, you did it. Because I can't let you get the token. All right, Dawn Blade comes back. No token granted. I'm going to throw... Uh, this, well, see, this is the kind of thing. Yeah, I'll throw this into my arsenal, and then I'll draw up to my hand. Hmm, yes, excellent. Excellent, excellent. Oh, great, that's what I was needing. Ah, I understand her better than ever. Uh, Brecken, no, <laughs> Flesh and Blood, the game has nothing to do with the Rutger Hauer film, as far as I know. Here's the interesting thing. You guys are having a good conversation here um, about whether or not they intend to rotate. And apparently, they have said that maybe they don't intend to rotate. Here's the interesting thing about this one. And I don't know how the trend is going to continue. But you're designing basically four mini decks for this class in your booster boxes, and then making sure that built various ways those classes play about at the right power level. Because you. Only a quarter of the cards can be used by every class, yeah. so it's contained. Now, in well, Arcane, I assume there are some like neutral -y cards. There are some right? neutrals, yeah. Now, in Arcane Rising, you get four new classes. So you have to make those four new classes with the cards that you're including in that booster box that only work with those classes are balanced against themselves and the original decks from Welcome to Wraith. Now, if that trend continues, you're only ever adding four mini decks with every booster box. So as long as you can keep those four decks on par with everything that's currently in the yeah. environment, well, and I assume you're never gonna rotate. At some point, they won't add cla like four classes in a set, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you get to like twenty different classes, but even then, it's like if you picture twenty classes, they can only like each hero has cards that only they can use, and then each class has cards only they can use. So like, and then on top of that, from a balance mechanic, it's like characters are the main concern that like if if new characters become too good comparatively old characters will essentially be rotated out. But like you can always use new cards with old characters. Right. So it's really interesting whether or not balance is a, a concern. It's a little bit tighter. It, it'd be one thing if you could choose any identity, any weapon, and any cards that can be included in your deck. That yeah. blows things wide open for like bustedness. But it's pretty tightly contained as to who can use what. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to watch it. Blake, you, the new heroes are in the booster boxes. The Arcane Rising heroes are in the boosters. They don't have the hero decks for those. They didn't make starter decks. Sounds like they're going to do uh, three set blocks, if I was just speculating. I don't know this for sure. But it's basically the starter set, where you get the hero decks introduced. Then you have the second set, which is basically building up on the starters, and it's another full set. Then you have a third set, which seems to me to be a supplemental set, a smaller set. Apparently there's a lot more gear. Yeah. In the third set. And this is where we could introduce new class cards for the first eight classes, yeah. or maybe even new heroes. I don't know. And then it would go to a new block, probably, where new hero decks come out, new classes, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, don't quote me on that. That's just what I think is going on. All right, you ready? Yeah. First action Scar for a Scar. It's a zero. Scar for a Scar, red, zero cost attack. When I play for Scar for a Scar, if I have no, less health than my opponent. You don't. I do you have do. less health. Remember, wow. I took that How big that punch happen? for that yeah, yeah. That's right. uh, It gains go again. So it's a four damage attack with go again. Why would you do that? Why is Steven crying? I'm getting dunked on. Hmm. This is cool. Bang Rank says they've stated that the winning champion of Worlds will get banned for the next season. Very cool. You know it would be super sweet if they ban that champion, but then next year... At Worlds, the final round is whoever the previous world champion is with their champion Ooh, that'd be against tight. whoever makes it to that the finals. That would be very cool. I always love the. I, I grew up watching wrestling with my grandpa, and so I love the like defend your title stuff. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh, this is cool. Thomas says apparently, ten victories in pro level tournaments will get a hero banned from Classic Constructed. Yikes. I think I assume there's probably ten or fifteen pro level tournaments a year. So like one hero just won 10 of those in a row. 
it would go away from that level of event. I'm trying to think over here. Quit distracting me. I don't know. I mean, do you block? I don't know. You got like a million attacks coming my way. I do. It's going to keep coming. Uh, I'll throw a three at it. Okay. So you get hit for one. Taking one. Uh, Any reactions before no. we No. This deck does have reactions, though, so I have to be careful. I will once per turn effect, though. When an attack action uh, I control hits, I can discard a card with zero cost to search my deck. This is an attack action. No. Uh, it has to be. It's not a weapon. An actual okay. thing. Yeah. Okay. No, I won't do that, actually. We'll just hit with that. Then, let's use Our my... Our subscriptions for this are going to be awesome to you guys. Absolutely awesome. They are awesome. It's the first time we've ever been able to do this, where we've got a promo that we're sending to subscribers, a publisher willing to do it. And it's so awesome. It's not a special... It's like it's not the only way you can get the card, right? It's not going to be like, ah, oh, if you don't have a covenant subscription, you can't play this card. Uh, but it'll be like a foil, maybe alt art, full art version of an existing card. Uh, and only one way to get it. And we've seen the, the, the next one the, in set three that's going to ship out with set three boxes, and it's amazing. We're waiting until we get final clarification. Uh, apparently, they're supposed to one arrive. One quality check. They're supposed to arrive to Flesh and Blood this week, and they want to make sure that quality check them and make sure that they're up to standard before they promise that, before we promise anybody that that's the card we're sending. But first of all, what does that say about Legend Story that they actually want to make sure that they can quality check the cards before they say anything about them being the, the cards that are included in the sub? Which is phenomenal. It's like, yeah, we care about this. We want to make sure that they're good quality before we, uh, we move forward with it. Uh, and then secondarily, just the idea that you get to provide something really unique through your subscription service is a dream come true for us. So that's Absolutely. super fun. Anybody who's got a... Uh, a sub, you got that on your on the way uh, with set three. And do you explain how that works for people that might not be familiar? Yeah, so a subscription is like it's just great. Um, <laughs> we, we designed it to be great because we we had been so tired of trying to keep up with new releases for the games that we just love playing. So basically, what we did was we were like, wouldn't it be nice if you could just click a button and then just get new releases for this game until you decided you didn't want them anymore? That's what a subscription is. You sign up, it costs you zero dollars. You can manage it in your account on our website. You can see what you're signed up for. We charge you about two weeks before a uh, release date of an upcoming product. Then we ship it, and we ship it on a timeline that is designed to get it to you according to estimates on the release day. So like, if you're about two days from us, we'll ship it out on Wednesday so that it gets there on Friday, assuming the release date is on Friday. And then on Flesh and Blood, it will also include an exclusive promo in those shipments. If you get three boxes on your subscription, you get three promos, six boxes, six promos, et cetera. So on and so forth. And these cards are going to be typically like three of cards, like normal cards in the game. So getting three boxes in your sub, you'll get a play set of exclusive promos. You'll get free shipping, which unlocks at three or more boxes. And you'll also, of course, get three booster boxes of cards. It's awesome. What else could you ask for? You ready for this? Yeah. Hardened cross trap action, destroy it. Uh, the next attack action card I play this turn costs two less to play. Go again. Okay, so you get a minus two discount. Easy. Yep. Chris Hands were saying, TC subs are awesome. Can't wait for the day I get a handwritten note from Zach and Steven in a delivery. I'll tell you what. 30, if you get a 30 box subscription, <laughs> I, will, I will drive it to your house. Really? Yeah. That's not enough. Assuming you're in the States. 50 box. I'll drive it. I'll be there. I'll load it in the old Tacoma. 2005. All right. <laughs> You're tempting people. If somebody gets a 50 box subscription and they get it charged at least once, I'd load 50 boxes of them in the back of my truck and make a road trip out of it. All right. Is that Chris says gonna... he lives in California. I'd drive out to California. Man, we have before. Yeah. It's devastating. Well, you know, it's not devastating if you're doing it like an adult. Yeah. Which is, yeah. you take two or three days to get there, you stop along the way, you yeah. hit up a couple of Well, cool then we, we're basically losing money on the deal at that no, point. No, you stream the whole time. I mean, we're just like, <laughs> it's like working from the car and streaming. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Uh, so next is minus two, and it gets go again. I'm going to play a surging. Oh, it already has go again. I don't need to do that. Hold on. Well, no, okay. you just get to go again from that card. Oh, yeah, yeah, it means okay. you can keep going. Yeah, it's a minus two. Uh, surging strike. Cost two, it has to go again, it's a five damage attack. Zero, okay. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? This is not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be poking at me. People ask about UK distribution. Yeah, we're looking at it. Uh, and assuming we get there and it gets set up appropriately, you'll definitely be able to get flesh and blood that way. Five damage attack? Why are you doing this? This is devastating. You have no resources currently open. 
So yeah. if that's a two resource card, you can give me two more Kadachi posts. That's right. Basically. Mm -hmm. I don't like you. Uh, I'm taking five, dude. All right. Unless you have reactions, yeah. I don't. Uh, then I will use my first Kadachi. Iron Rot. Pain here. I have two left over. Any reactions? Nope. You've then seen I'll it. use You're my next see it Kadachi. Again. Iron Rot again. This Iron Rot's good for one thing, and it's blocking your little daggers. All right, uh, and then that will end my. That's a cool chain to see. That's actually. super cool. Yeah, I like I what, what you did. Scar for a scar. You got your cross strap. A couple of surging strikes. Ugh, gross. All right. How uh, do I feel like I'm losing? Well, I mean, I don't know if you're losing. I feel bad because I'm not putting stuff in my arsenal, but. Yeah. What a what a noob. Chris says, you'll be losing money, but I'll show you a good time. <laughs> Chris says, $2,250 for a weekend with Steven playing games? That seems worth it. I don't know. That's actually hilarious. I'm not sure that it is. In fact, better offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same right. amount of content memberships. <laughs> 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 Okay, now now it's ah. Uh. Having zero cost attacks is crazy, dude. I know. What's going on with you? It's just crazy. Okay. Chris says I may as well move to Oklahoma. I guess. <laughs> Ross, it's gonna take the whole weekend to open the packs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you probably get a legendary though, right? One of forty-eight boxes or whatever it is. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I think I've got it. All right. No, I don't. Maybe I do. Um, but maybe I don't. Okay, it's the mana is the problem. It's the resources, man. Tom, definitely asking a serious question. If you manage to get distribution in the UK, would you still be able to bo offer boxes from the first two waves? Um, assuming we, we get there, um, yeah, probably. Uh, we'll look at that. I mean, I'm sure there'd be a, not, a lot of interest up front because it's been hard to get until then. One, two, three. Now, I know in every card game I've ever played, the moment, the moment that it really happens is when you start building decks. Yeah, I know. I can't wait. I'm excited. Okay, so let's get it started. I'm going to start by playing Warrior's Valor. And I'm going to pay for that with an Energy Potion Blue. It's going to generate three. So that means I have two floating. Now we're going to read Warrior's Valor. My next weapon attack gets plus one. And if it hits, it gains go again. Nice. And I can go again now. So why not do that? Pay one for a Dawn Blade. Swing. It is currently at a four attack. What would you like to defend with, Mr. Bon? So this is not the one that I need to worry so much about. Or perhaps you do need to worry about it. This attack does have go again. I'll take four. Only if it hits. I'll take four. All right, hold on. I got some reactions. Well, I have some things to add to it. Yeah, do your thing, do your stuff first. No, I want to just totally, already playing off sequence. I want to totally stop. Retro Daniel, yeah, we're we're coming for you. We 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 know, we know. All right, do you have you have no defense? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. So now we go to attack reactions. Why are you doing that? You're like, everything I had planned is now no longer correct. Why am I not blocking? Yeah. Because I'm a genius. I hear a genius. <laughs> All right, take four. Call me in the morning. Don't mind me. Down to 11. OK. Pay one, swing again. For how many? Three. Unless this is uh, your next weapon, yeah. Three. This is not the time for reactions. 
Not the time for reactions. This is a time for putting your shields up. If you got shields. Yeah, let's do that. Oh my gosh. You just bring in the bring in the train, huh? I don't want the second attack to hit. I know I know how the down blade works. Alright, I don't have any attack re well, maybe I do. You keep doing the thing that you're not supposed to do, man. <laughs> Genius! <laughs> So all these defense reactions that say if your opponent defended with a card from hand. Yeah. Yeah, none of that has happened this turn. Okay, <laughs> cool. So my entire... Yeah, that's so funny. ...plan. Thomas, I, I really appreciate that comment. So these streams have been really incredible. If I had the money, I'd be a content subscriber and a subscriber to about four games. We're the best. Hey, genuinely really appreciate you saying that. Uh, glad to have you here. And uh, no harm, no foul. Your, your presence is support enough. All right, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I lead with reactions first, so I'm going to play an attack reaction. Stroke of Foresight cost me one. I'm going to pitch one from my hand to pay for it. Target weapon attack gains plus two. If you had defended with a card from your hand, other things would have happened. How? But it's currently a five okay. to your three. Well, now I'll play a defense reaction you got from my hand. Uh, it's called Flick Flack. If the next card I defend with this turn is has a combo in it, it gains plus two. Uh, so it's kind of cool because I would have to block with it. And then, because it's a reaction, so I'd have to take another reaction to get plus two. If the next card you defend with this turn is a card with combo, it gains plus two. So it would have to be another defense reaction that said combo on it. Yeah. Or, or, if, you do a, or if you do a second attack. Mm. Like if I did that on the first attack, then oh, the next yeah, the next yeah. time I combo. So it's, it's uh, interesting. That is super interesting. I think it's important to actually keep the stacks up, too, so we remember the, the effects. Yeah, that's what the chain's all about, right? That is the chain. Chain, chain, chain. OK, so five to five. Is that technically considered defending with a card from your hand? Do defense reactions? Wait, that's true. Hold on. I saw this in the rule book. Once you play a defense reaction, it counts as a defending card. OK, a defending card is a card that is adding armor to a chain link that includes Anything you defended with from hand, equipment, and defense reaction cards. So what, what bad happens if I decide to not take this? If you've defended with a card from your hand, this chain link, draw a card, then put a card from your hand on the top or bottom of your deck. I don't think that triggers unless it is true the moment that I play that card. Would you read it like that? I don't know. Does someone who knows better on the stream know? I think reprise is one of those things, right? It's like intimidate. The moment you play it, you check. Have you defended with a card from your hand? No. Then okay. you go to your reaction. Okay. That's how I'm going to play it. All right. We'll get corrected on it otherwise. So five to five. You take no damage. Clears. And at some point, this will matter. Minus one. Broken. Broken. It's so cool. We're just Banger, are you saying it counts because it hasn't resolved yet? Oh, that's right, because we're building the stack up. Yeah. That's right. And then we resolve down. So I get to draw the top card, right? Uh. Draw a card, then put a card from my hand on the top or bottom of my deck. So, draw a card, and I have no hand, so I can put this on the top or bottom. Is it defending here? Is it defending here? Is it defending here? I get what this is trying to do. I'll do it. I'll, I'll keep it on top, sure. And then I'll draw four. Okay. Good. Yeah, that makes sense, Bangering. If you think about the stack, that makes total sense. Build it up and then knock it down. All right, mine? It's yours. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to use my first Kadachi to one attack. Um, Would you quit poking at oh, me? I know, wrong. Let's, let's use this one. So it's a one attack, and it gains go again. I, I'm not going to waste cards on one. I'm never going to do that. Dude, paper you get, cuts. You get your one. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's got go again. This is this is the most aggravating deck to play against. It's probably the one you're gonna love the most if I know our history. John, yes, that's correct. It works like Sky Terror, right? So, I play it, and then until it resolves, the next attack doesn't matter. Um, so if I play something and it immediately resolves, because it's like action cards or instant cards, they're going to get played. We get a pass play, and then they immediately trigger. And then so the next attack at that point would be the next one that we play. If I've already played an attack, and then I have an attack reaction on top, then we could build this chain all the way out, and then we resolve it from top down. And so if this reaction said next attack, it would be this one, because I think then this one resolves at the end. If I'm uh, 
if I'm not mistaken. See you, Ross. Uh, all right, so now I'm playing a rising knee thrust. It does not have go again, because the only way it does is if I played uh, leg tap first. You're dang right it doesn't. So it's a three. Three. Nobody cares about your three. Right? Right? One, two, three. This one. I'm blocking. Blocking with a three. Okay. Defensive three. Now we have reactions. Before any of this resolves, we have reactions. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to react here and give it plus one. Okay. And that technically won't happen yet until we have both pass. Yep. So now we're getting into the stack now. Um, I have no defense reactions, so then we will resolve down. So breaking scales says what? Uh, plus one. Destroy breaking scales, target attack action with a combo gains plus one. Has right. combo so now that happens. It's now at a four. This attack. Then we have another pass play, I believe. And then like we do at Sky Terror before. Really? I think once any anything in the chain resolves, one thing resolves pass play, one thing resolves pass play, one mm. thing resolves pass play. So we can, but we can react with more reactions. It's just like Sky Terror, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, we're done. So now it's four to three. So it's I take for one. one. Uh, I'll trigger my once per turn effect when an attack action card I control hits. I can discard a card uh, with a cost of zero. I can't do that. I've made a mistake. I don't Yay. Have zero. Uh, I'll put this in my arsenal. <laughs> this goes under, and it's your turn. All right. I only took one little poke this turn. Yeah, I basically decided to actually build a turn. Locator, we I cannot wait to watch that Eurovision show on Netflix. We actually celebrate oh Eurovision every year. Oh my goodness! Is it a show? Year. It's it's Will Ferrell. It's like I a thought. Whole... I thought it was a movie. Is it a show? It's a movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was a whole. I, I didn't know that we had that difference in uh, the way that we describe things these days. Oh, it's show, a show movie. In my Anything head, it's entertaining a, to me as a show. You, is you said Netflix show. So it made me think it was like a 10 episode season, which is like, was next level. I didn't think they would commit that to that. Eurovision entry, Cleopatra, oh my gosh, it blows my mind. I love that song. I actually have it. I, I'm, I'm actively going to add that to like my DJ uh, list. John Crinson says, how do you tell the difference between a card that resolves immediately versus one that enters the chain? So it has to be an attack for the chain, the combat chain to so start. So attack starts the chain. And then the defender gets to play any number of defensive shields from the bottom right corner. They don't have to pay for them usually. It's just playing them. And those go into a stack. And then Those are all interu uninterruptible. Yeah. And then after that, we have an action phase where I get to basically play attack reactions. Steven gets to play uh, defense reactions. But the way it happens is like you react, then Steven gets a chance to react. Um, We'll build one up. Let's build one up. Yeah, and, and then we would resolve out. down. But if something resolves, we have a chance to react again. Okay, so I'm going to start by playing a warrior action. It's not a combat. It doesn't say attack or combat on it, so this is just a standard action. It says my next weapon attack gains plus one, and if it hits and I have no cards in my arsenal, I can reveal one and potentially put it down, and it has go again on it. So that action happens. It just immediately resolves. It doesn't open up anything weird. Um, then I gotta pay for that. So I'm gonna pay for that. Oh no, wait, wrong. Played this one. Warrior's Valor, yellow. And I gotta generate one resource, so I'll pitch the Nature's Pilgrimage. Sit on two, because I paid one here. Standard action, my next weapon attack is plus two, and if it hits, it gains go again. And this card goes again as well. So then I'm gonna pay one to start a combat chain with the old Dawn Blade. It's a one cost attack. It's currently at a five, because this is already resolved. And then uh, nothing fancy, just a five. And now Zach gets to play any cards in the defense that he wants. And these are not, this is not a stack based resolution. So we're just going to basically set up the pins. And then when we get to the reaction phase, we start knocking them down. Uh oh, Locator. It's happening. I'd been on the fence about this game, but I can't resist TC subscriptions. Well, then I've, I've done my job well. I want to <laughs> make, sure that, <laughs> make sure that you can't right. help but get this a subscription. Five. This is five. I'm allowing it. All right, so now let's talk about this stack for a second. I'm not helping by playing the ninja deck, honestly, because I, I chain things out, but defensively I'm not helping the cause. Sure, yeah, because you, you can't defend and attack so well in ninja. So, like, I could play an attack reaction. And then Zach either plays a defense reaction or passes. And then if Zach passes and I pass, then this resolves. 
and then it goes again. And now I can play another reaction if I want. I can uh, say, yes, I'm playing, or I'll pass. Then Zach could play a defense reaction. Then it comes back to me. If I pass and then you pass, your defense reaction resolves. And on and on it goes. So we could also do, like, play a card here for attack reaction. And then Zach says, I'm going to respond to that with this defense reaction. And then maybe I respond to that with my attack reaction. Once we both pass, we resolve this one. And then I can play an attack reaction here. You can play a defense reaction there. We both pass, then this one resolves. Then again. And then we finally resolve the attack. Does that make sense? Did it that make sense, sense to, to me. you? Yeah, okay, I'm good. there. Well, that's the only one I care about. Oh, thanks. People out there, I mean, as long as I'm teaching Zach well, what does it matter? You care about me, I'll care about them. <laughs> uh, five attack. It's all resolving? Yep. Okay. And it gets go again for Warrior's Valor. So I'll use my last three damage attack. Block it. Done. No reactions on my side, no reactions on your side. Stop me if I'm wrong. Arsenal coming in. Pitch goes to the bottom of the deck. And I draw four cards. I'm starting to understand this so well. All right. I will play a leg tap for one. I have two bonus resources. Four? Mm hmm. Have I got something for you, buddy? Four would go again. Uh, so I will not play anything in a defense. Okay. Do you have any attack reactions? Not currently. I, you're passing. Mm -hmm. So I will play a springboard somersault. It's going to block for four, and it costs zero. You got it. All right, so that fizzles. Then for my next trick. What's up, Ginevra? I'm glad you're here watching us live. Very cool. Surging strike from my arsenal cost me two, uh, and it's a four attack. With go again? Your face. <laughs> what is this ninja? <laughs> Dorinthia's like, stop. Did you stand still already? You uh, can picture her in like her heavy coat of mail, and she just like yeah. can't hit. Yeah. You've been hitting me, fine. Yes, I have. But you just aren't defending. I'm just swording your armor down. Mm. I see how this works. It's just hard to choose every time. It's the goal, right? It's the goal. Okay, Decision but, complexity, not play complexity. Yeah, which is a good way to think about it, really. Um, okay. Playing to the defense. Do you have any attack reactions? Nope. I have no defense reactions, so we resolve the attack. I take one. All right. I'll use my once per turn effect. I can't do it. I try to do that every time. Ninjing is hard, man. Yeah. And then I'll put two more resources in. We'll use the Kadachi. Oh, I think you're going to use two Kadachis ultimately. Right? I am indeed. I'll take one, dude. Unless you have reactions. Nope. Then we'll do it again. Happening again. All right. End of the chain. We got ourselves a heater here. I haven't even gotten a token. That was my goal. <laughs> this is for you. Oh, yeah. This is good. This is from him. <laughs> You're not even ready. I might be ready, man. Can you do six? Pass, guess, guess we'll find out, won't we? my ninja dodges. <laughs> um... Starting out with a Sharpened Steel action, blue. Uh, Van asking, how do you tell the rarity? So if Sharpened Steel blue comes up, you'll see along the bottom, uh, there's like a... Is uh, it the C down there? Yeah, is it common? there's T-E-A-024. Uh, so I think that's a starter. That thing. little bottom react, that little symbol might be it too. No, it's not. So they actually fixed this. In set three, the C or the R or the L is has a circle of color behind it oh, cool. that they, matches the rarity. Okay, they made a symbol. Yeah, so okay. it's basically like it'll still have a C or whatever it is, but like, you know, C might be blue with a blue bubble behind it, so you can just easily look and see that it's a common. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to play sharp and steel. My next attack is plus one, and I get yeah. to go again. All right. Um, then I'm going to attack with Dawnblade for one, and I'm going to dump the Iron Song response for three money. So it's going to have two floating, 
And it's over to you. Four damage attack coming from Dawnblade. You can play defense cards as you like. Mm-hmm. I'm getting sweaty booster opening hands right now. Uh, we'll block for three. All right, right take one. Yep. Okay. Your face. It's like no, wait, I have a reaction. Actually, hold on. hold on. No, no, let's do this. Let's I do have a right. reaction. So this is your chain. Well, let's this, leave the card. this played first. Sharpened Steel was played. Oh, My yeah, next yeah. attack is plus one. So, there you go. So then Dawn Blade comes in. It's four, minus one is three. Now we go to the reaction step, where minus three is one. How about some of this? So we're still resolving. We we're, we're resolving, yeah, because this is what I'm supposed to do. Uh, stroke of Foresight for one is my first reaction. Target weapon attack gains plus three, and if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, I draw a card and I can put it on the top or bottom of the deck. All right, so then this, is, well, this will be a good resolution, so let's let that resolve. All right, it resolves. So I'm currently swinging for three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. This will resolve. Now we have another pass play, starting with the active player. I'm passing on my attack reaction. Do you have any defense reactions? Nope. All right. So then we resolve the attack. It is currently a three, four, five, six, seven, minus three. Take, Take four. four. Down to two. Call me in the morning. Now, if I go again on that Dawn Blade, I could. And I, oh, I get to resolve that thing, too. Top card, and I can put it at the top or bottom. Um, thing I'm asking if our token manufacturing is hold because of Corona. It is not. That is alive and well. We do that uh, in house right here in Tulsa, so we get to keep doing that the whole time, uh, which has been great. And the the support we've been receiving from people ordering that while everything is going on and the world's crazy has been incredible. Wow, dude, this is insane. Okay, over to you. All right. Yeah, Galactic Trendsetter, we're, we're still here. We've been streaming four or five hours a day for the past 16 weeks, which is very strange to say. Scar for a scar. You guys are like our family now, because I don't get to see my family. I haven't seen them in a long time, except on FaceTime. <laughs> nice. Hmm. Scar damage? for a scar. Zero at cost, four damage attack, and it gets go again because I have less health than you. Mm -hmm. But if I had a way to deal six to myself, I could turn that go again off right now. I would let you. Trust me. I'll clean my board up real quick. Um, I will not play any defense cards. Do you have any attack reactions? Not yet. All right, I will play a defense reaction. Just springboard somersault for two. Jonathan, can you ever get stuck with a hand you can't get rid of? Uh, no. You can put a card in Arsenal to save it for next round, and you can pretty much, because of your core weapon that you start with, you can always use up to three resources. So you'd have to have like a wildly bad hand of cards that you probably just should never think about playing. I don't think they exist. Like, yeah, I don't you can, even know. You can do something with your hand. All right, uh, you're going to block for two. Yep. Any oh. reactions on your end? No. Nope. All right, we'll let it resolve. So minus two, so I'll take two. All right. Now, and then uh, Joseph Boyne, a couple of quick questions. Any word on Sky Terror tokens? We are actively looking at them right now. So they're, they're kind of entering the conceptual development pipeline. So we'll see where that goes. Nick K went down an Arkham DB rabbit hole and came back to Zach losing. What happened? I'm not losing. Nobody's losing. I'm going to discard a head jab and trigger my once per turn effect when I deal damage with Katsu. Oh, you did it. To go you, get a you combo. finally did it. Yep. Uh, Locator Gaming say, when you open packs for this game, I don't think we'll have a Dan Steven card moment like when you open Pokemon booster packs. I thought Zach was going to fall off his chair laughing when that happened. It was, it was, it was funny. I, I thought I was funny. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> it's you, man. <laughs> David Whitfield giving you some good advice here. You have to take out Dorinthia now or you're done. Katsu seems annoying, but Dorinthia seems to be able to block more and deal more damage. Yeah, I'm trying to do it now. Uh-oh, you gave me your strategy. That's always the case. You're trying to kill me now? <laughs> oh, no. Connor O'Neill saying, Hey, Zach, see when I revisited your Warhammer Champions podcast the other day and went to check in on the game. Physical and digital is dead. What a squandering of a great game. That is a very unfortunate story. One of thousands in this industry um, of publishers that, uh, you know, you just you you make a wrong call or you... You don't have the right game plan going in, or 
you get a little scared that it's not going to be as successful, so you stop investing in it, the game kind of folds. Their biggest problem, I think, was that they said, well, the digital is doing pretty well, let's just cut the physical and focus on digital. I think they should have absolutely played to their strength, which was we can scan in individual cards out of booster packs. So the only way you should be able to get cards is by buying the booster packs. Then you can play fully physically and fully digitally with the same collection, scan it in, you get games online, you get games in person. Don't confuse it with a buy online currency to get digital booster cards that you can't have physically. That's a good way to kill a physical game. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. And it was almost like committing to physical or digital. Like yeah, that, that takes a, a commitment to physical. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not going to do that, you may as well just spend digital the whole time. Just make a digital game. Okay, did you do anything that I care about yet? I got this card, and it's in my Banished, and I can play it from here. Okay. So I'll read it when you when I care about uh, it. Well, I'll play it right now. Fluster Fist, four damage attack. Nope, not yet. It doesn't have go again. Later. Uh, <laughs> head Jab, zero cost, three damage attack. Is there anything combo-wise I need to be aware of? Nope. Open the center isn't going to be played. Okay. Three damage attack, you say? Mm-hmm. Put my zero hood in there. Okay. <laughs> I have no react. Do you have any reactions? This doesn't matter. Okay. I'm just doing that to like freak you out. There's okay. just no reason for it. Okay. I'll take three. All right. Then I'll go again. Fluster fist for four. For four, huh? That's the perfect amount. I don't want to play cards, man. Yeah, you want to destroy me. All right, uh, I'll drop a three in. Now, do you still have Kodachi land? I don't have money. You don't have money. Good. Okay, three in. All right, any reactions? Uh, nope. Okay. Take one. Take one. I've been here before. My chain cleared. <laughs> Two to one. I've been here before. Give me that big five defense card. Sweet. Okay, now we need to figure so, this out. Knowing my deck is, would have been super helpful. I technically, the combo card that combos off of head jab, which is what I had, um, cost two. So, like, I didn't know that until I dug for it. This is probably the biggest skill barrier deck that there is you in just the need, starters. He, he requires you know your cards to, to do him well. I, I'm playing him fine. But like a good costume that, player that could have would be been like really good. good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael is saying, it, didn't Keyforge have scannable decks that you can use online? They have scannable decks. No, but you can't use them online. Hold on. I'm a. Let me let me show you my surprised reaction to the fact that that hasn't happened yet in many years of Keyforge. Why not? We we talked about this on a couple podcasts ago. Why I not? think I think Keyforge not having a digital component at launch or even by now two years in is one of the greatest like tabletop misses. It is the perfect game for it. Uh, you have to buy a physical deck. It's unique. You can scan it in. When you go to play, you can pull up a random deck that you own. You can uh, enter a tournament, and you can mix up anyone that enters the tournament. The decks get floated around. It's a system built for playing digitally. It's, it seems like a really great game for that. You practice with all your, because the, the thing about Keyforge, we talked about this, the game, uh, what do we call it? The game outside the game? Game outside the game. Um, it doesn't have that. You can't deck build. You can't co like collect in a traditional way. So like you collect decks, but at a certain point, you have a ton of them. So like you need to be able to play it all the time, like an hour or two on a weeknight, an hour or two on the weekend. And that way, when you get together physically, it's less about like figuring out the decks and more uh, playing the decks that you're, you've been practicing with online. The other thing is, with Corona, not having a local environment to play these Keyforge in, makes it pretty much a, a just non-issue, right? If you don't have people that you're playing with, uh, one of the best things for Keyforge is like local sealed. Walk in, pay 10 bucks, you have a deck. And when you can't really do that, that, that game is going to struggle. Uh, I should be using this hood right now, but I'm not going to. I don't know that I have a win here. Um, because you don't have a win doesn't mean you have a loss. That's right. I'm going to start my turn with a Nature's Path Pilgrim, which cost me one. I'm going to pitch a Somersault. Float one. Target weapon gets plus three, and if it hits and I have nothing in my arsenal, I can do the reveal and, and see you later. Uh, then I'll pay one to strike you with Dawnblade. It's currently at a six. So I have to block for six. You have to block for six or use defense reactions to your liking. 
And <laughs> Wizzykin, that is a hilarious, devastating comment. <laughs> the biggest missing component was a fun game for me. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Uh, I'll block for six. I drew only two. Oh, my gosh. So you're not going to lose. That's as good that. as it could go, yeah. Um, okay. So it hits. I have no cards in my... Oh, no, it doesn't hit. You blocked it, it all. Yeah. No, oh, I don't get to do anything. Cool. You must feel very proud of yourself. Okay. Comes back here, and then I draw a fresh four, and then you're the man now. All right. Got one health, and you've got Kodachi's for With days. With one card. Kodachi for one. This is so annoying. You've got to get rid of two cards. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think you have to do what I did earlier, which is you lose two cards here, but then on your turn, arsenal something. Maybe. So you can have a three-card turn. That's right. Hmm. Okay. So we've got to look at how we're going to win. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> got him. <laughs> Sick burn. <clears throat> so I'm going to lose two cards. You're the worst. Seriously? Yeah. Man, if I didn't have to, oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. This is the ninja way. Watch yourself. It would be good. David Whitful, wow, Zach pulls out a save. Where was that before? <laughs> mm. That is so bogus. Ugh. I hate it. It's fine. Everything's fine. Because I went this one, and then I went this one. Fine, fine. Wait, no. <laughs> Eclectic. Is Steven dead yet? I want to see some packs open. Wouldn't it be crazy if we hit a legendary right here in like a it handful would be of packs? Sick. Yeah. We it just have to ba sick. bask in it for a while. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. One there, one there. Okay. Um. Aren't these Kadachis crazy? <laughs> oh, I don't have go again. Oh, that's the problem. I can't stand it, dude. I Bubba says, possible it. Keyforge digital announcement on July 29th for the Gen Con in-flight. We've said that every year. I'll this this see would it. be the time to do it, right? Big, big, big stage Gen Con digital. Um, it's, you have isolation with Corona, like, it's either now or never. I'll say that for Keyforge. No. I want to play this one. Sorry. This. Three. Chris thinks you're going to pull a Fable card. Oh, I do too. Dan never misses. Block. Right. Blocked one. Spend one. Kadachi. Block for two. You got it. Let me draw my hand. Yeah, I mean, I, I still uh, I have a box of mashed mutation coming. We'll, we'll probably get that on on stream. I thought you were going to say mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Beans, greens. Potatoes, it is actually a pretty good sequence here. OK, so my turn, Wounding Blow, zero cost attack for four. What's it called? Wounding Blow, I thought, you said, I thought you said Winning Blow. I was like, what? How did you just have a winning shot? Red Wounding Blow. So it's four. Damage. four. It's got, uh, who was the King of the Elves that wasn't Aragorn or uh, the other one? Celeborn? Legolas. This guy? You know, that's all sullen and weird in the, in the movie? Probably Celeborn. Is that right? Is like it the Galadriel's the elves, uh, yeah. dude? Dad, yeah. yeah. There was also Haldir? Dad, right? Galadriel's dad? I don't think so. Is there an elf dad? Elrond? He's Elrond! Yes, yeah, yeah, Elrond. Yeah, yeah. Elf dad. <laughs> Elrond is Galadriel's son and Arwen's father. Oh, the elves are confusing to yeah. me. They don't yeah. age, really. No. Well, they do. It's just like... They live thousands of years. They get there, and then they just kind of stay there, don't they? Yeah. That's Elrond. Uh, when you blow four. <laughs> so this is interesting. You can block for three, right? Take one. Yeah, but if I take turn. one and you have a reaction for plus one. That would be amazing. <laughs> but I think you're trying to hit me with a Dawnblade. Uh, but, you know, let me look. <laughs> 
July 9th is really a new Marvel Champion scenario pack? What's that about, Tresmillion? Give us a scoop. I like how we find out all of our information from other people. That can't be true. I don't know, man. Are you saying Asmodee won't flip the script? And that makes me insane? really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um... On FFG website. So, tell, Nick, tell me more. I don't have time to go look at it, really. I'm doing it right now. Okay. That's just too much. Robert, a heart attack. That's like running a, you know. The scenario pack? What's a, what scenario pack? What's the name of it? How about running that? Running on time subscription service whenever they don't give you the times. No, this is a lie. No, I see nothing. There's nothing there. Oh, Lord of the Rings? Oh, Lord of the Rings. MC. Oh, no, no. F FFG announcement on the 9th. That makes oh. sense. That makes sense. Because we, we haven't heard any new things coming in a minute. All right, here we go. What are you doing with this wounding blow? Are you getting I don't wounded? Know. Are, are you, you losing gonna, the game? Are you going to plus one me? Let me see your discard pile. <laughs> yeah, right. As if you could tell anything. <laughs> I want the appearance of knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> well, like Razor Reflex. Choose one. Target sword or dagger weapon gets plus three. It's a reaction. That's neither of those. I'd have to have money, so it'd have to be a zero cost attack uh, reaction okay, that gets okay. plus one. I don't believe in so that. So I only got one card. I don't believe in that for half a second. I could pop the merchant's hood and go looking for it. Great. Effigy Live Magellan. Okay, we're following now. We we have to be very we have to be very on guard at all times because oftentimes things fall out of the sky when it comes to all right, I'll block Logistics. for three. Your own wounding blow. Yep, wounding blow blue. Okay, attack reactions? I don't have any. <laughs> ah, take one. I knew it. Putting this in my arsenal. Well, I thought that was going to be a Dawn Blade swing. You can't. It doesn't have go again. My man. Just have to wait, wait for you to get in there. Okay, over to you. All right, you ready for some Kadachi action? Yes. Kadaction? I think that's what I do. All right, I'm going to use a Kadachi. Cost mm -hmm. me one, I have two floating. Good luck. Destroy the merchant's hood. Trade three. We are about down to one health. It's really good. And then I shuffle, right? Did, it, did that say that? What is where? The merchant's hood. Do I shuffle this and then draw? Shuffle cards from my hand into my deck, yeah, and then draw. Okay, so I put three from my deck. Oh, you're going for the long downtown. I've got a, I've got a shot at it. I'm almost certain. A shot at what? Oh, do you want back it. to me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> That'd be amazing. Like this card? Steel Blade Shunt Red. <laughs> if it defends a weapon attack, deal the damage to the attacking hero. No! <laughs> so I'll declare uh, no blockers. And then I'll play a shield Steel Blade Shunt uh, reaction. Block for six and do one back because I defend a weapon attack. You have to pay for it? <laughs> actually, I might actually want to use that. Consider it paid for. You did for it. it. Nice. <laughs> Ding. That's awesome. See, that's cool, getting to see someone win off turn. Because I basically, my turn is that, this, because you have to stop everything. And then I can do a, uh, no, I won't do that because I'm going to go again. I pay one for this, so I've spent these. And then this. Nice. So you'd have to block four. Yeah, impossible, right? And this is the card that I've got to have. has to be for four. So... I felt pretty good until no, you, you suddenly beat you me. Should, you should feel great about that. Yeah, right, great. so and here's the question. So people asking 20 versus 40 health. So I'll just tell you what I've seen. So I watched, uh, there's a really good video that Flesh and Blood put out. It's about seven months ago. They did a designer challenge um, where like one of the winners of like the New Zealand circuit played a deck against the designer, one of the designers of the game. And it was like a challenge. Um, and so the designer had built a very strange like deck that explodes at the very end of the game. And so this game is incredible. I mean, they go through their decks, I think, at least once. Maybe get down to the end of the second shuffle through, that the second that the pitches had become the deck. 
And at the end does like 14 to 15 damage in a single swing. Has Gets down to like two, yeah. but has stacked up the stuff that's needed and has stacked the deck right. And then it's like this giant combo breaks out. And I was like, that is super it's cool. It's like the next level. And I think that's where like at 40 health, you can take more damage in the mid game. And when you're doing that, you're actually specifically, and it makes sense in Constructed, right? You're building towards this big, mm -hmm. massive series of turns. Uh, but that's also why I'm really interested in Sealed. Because, yes, like, I think Constructed too. will be fun. You'll get good with the deck and a character, and you'll know what's going on. And, like, you know, it's just... You have to play a lot to get to the point where you can manage that in-game state well. Um, but then Sealed, to me, is like this, where it's, like, scrappier from the start because we have less health, and you have to block more. 100%. I love, I love that. So we're going to do that. Yeah, so here's what we should do. Um, first of all, David Whitfield has a great comment here. Uh, went on the backswing, punt return for the TD by Steven. You really did punt that return was, that, that was for the hilarious. TD. Um, I think we should, let's just open some packs. I don't know if we have time to get into uh, like we'll an actual sealed game. We'll at least open pack game. and let's see what see that what would be look like. Let's just take a look. So technically in sealed we each get six, right? Let's I'm just take hand a look. Six. Yeah, let's take a look. Do you want to do three of each set? Or do you want to do Welcome to Wraith today, and then we'll do Arcane Rising next week? I think week? we should just yeah. do Welcome to Wraith. Okay, okay. There's six. Now I'm going to open six. We'll come up for air here for a second. Hold yeah. on. I'm probably going to get some water, too. You need anything while we're here? Um, depends on if I get a uh, Fabled card or not. Whether or not I need to go to the bathroom now, or if there's any risk, you know? I'm going to get water. Get you a little can, too giddy. You can get people hyped up. All right, everybody. You ready to get hyped up? Hi. It, Anybody who knows me knows that I'm an unbridled hype machine. I'm an animal of excitement and energy, as you can clearly tell from this stream. <laughs> hey, grab me a beer, would you? Yeah, what's uh, The non-flat one? <laughs> the only one that's drinkable? Obviously, since our store is closed and has been for months, uh, the kegs that we have that are, are, you know, we're paying to cool. Um, we can't just let them sit there. So Zach and I have been trying our best, and it's, it's not been an easy journey to at least have a beer, at least a half pint every stream, trying to not waste the beer that's in there. But one of them has definitely gone, and the other one is soon on the way. So we're just trying to be sustainable drinkers, okay? That's all we're trying to do here. Uh, Chris, yes, you nailed it. That's exactly right. Uh, we're responsible for drinking anything remaining in the kegs. We've done a pretty good job. Two of them are gone. Don't know what happened to them. One of them went flat, very flat, undrinkably flat, which is a, a far cry for me to declare a beer undrinkable. Um, and then the, the fourth one, the F5, is what we're working on right now. How are you guys doing? What do you think? Give me, give me some initial thoughts. This is our first real moment with Flesh and Blood. So... Um, you know, we did the same thing with Sky Terror, and I remember at the end of the Sky Terror, that first stream, thank you, Zach, uh, I was like, yeah, this, this game has so many legs for me. Uh, it's got a lot going for it, and I really appreciate it. And well, I'm, I'm feeling the exact same way on this one. The moment for me with Sky Terror, and I think it was the same for you, is we, we got on with our initial stream with Sky Terror, and then I went and deck belt that weekend. Cheers, everybody. <sighs> Cheers. To water. Yep. Uh, You're not doing your part, Zach. Well, I explained to them that it was our responsibility to drink the beer that yeah, we Yeah, you like. can't let it go bad. No beer left behind. Um, I'm saving up my beer points for this weekend. Um, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the... I'm going to cash in some big checks yeah. this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> America. <laughs> um, but I went to deck belt for Sky Terror and my mind was blown. So I'm excited. I haven't gotten to the point where I've deck belt for this. That's why I want to open some packs and see what we're working yeah. with. And then ultimately over the next several streams, I think we're doing next Tuesday and Wednesday for, for Flesh and Blood. Yeah, diving um, in deep. And it's just going to be taking open and packs, integrating them into our decks, and like slowly building up until we're comfortable building our own decks. And we're going to, the key points for me are like, what does it look like to have a box? Mm -hmm. What does it look like to have two boxes and three boxes? Just so you can get a feel. 50 boxes. Because I think that's in, one of the contexts that's just hard as a collectible game is like, do I need to buy six boxes a set to be reasonable? Or is it one or two? I, most people are saying two or three yeah. is like the normal. You, you, you don't win unless you can have fun on one to three boxes. I think anything over that is ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, you want to open your first pack? Yes, I would I love to walk through it. But I do want to read some comments here before I do that. Um, ask for comments, and I got comments. Yeah. Um, so, Bangrang said we basically made zero mistakes so far, which is nice. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, we've, you know, we've been around the block a few times. Uh, Nick Kate said, I told my wife way back, these guys probably have a shop that sells beer. Turns out I was right. I like the look of the shop. Very cool vibe. Going to have to visit sometime. Would love to, uh, Nick. Actually working on 3.0 right now. Uh, Van says, art looks amazing. Play seems fun. Eclectic said, I already bought the starters from you when I saw the announcement. The hype is strong, and I can't wait to get them. Chris said, I love the art. I love the gameplay. Seems very accessible. I'm very scared to start cracking packs because the collectible element is going to seal the deal. Yeah, watch out. Uh, Kinetic saying, F5 is good, but really hoppy. I can't drink a lot of it. You know what? Actually, I think this is one of the lesser hoppy uh, IPAs, RPAs. which means that I've probably just... Uh, you know, drank too many it, of them. It was the first IPA I liked. Tom McCall says, this will fill the fantasy card game hole that Warhammer Champions left. That's great. Uh, Graham says, Flesh and Blood seems cool. I'm very wary of a CCG format, not because, not only because I don't want to spend a ton on a single deck, but pretty much no other CCGs make it. That's the question, right? This is like voting for a third party, right? If you just bought the products, they'd keep making them. But I understand the concern. I will say... And I'm telling you very seriously as somebody who is as much a person as a uh, part of this particular business that definitely is wanting you to buy these products. I will say from a personal <laughs> angle, there has not been a publisher that has come along that is as dedicated to this, the long-term success of a game uh, that I have seen personally. Now, I have, I'm not the inner workings of Asmodee. I'm not the inner workings of Tops or whatever, Upper Deck or, or what have you. But... In terms of funding, in terms of investors and investment, in terms of actual long-term plan for what this game's going to become, in terms of cards already designed, I think Legend Story is set up to actually have long-term success with this one. The only variable here is coronavirus hit at the wrong time, like pandemics usually don't hit at the right time. So <laughs> uh, that's kind of why we're here. It's like we think if we can get this help get this one just kind of that momentum to keep going i think it's one that could actually get there i yeah, really I mean, really do i think the recognition uh, we've seen this a lot which is a lot of games come and go um and and part of why we're excited about sky Terror, part of why we're excited about flesh and blood is that these are publishers that this is not just a you know they raised money they're trying to make a product that makes money if they fail they'll go away and do something else right this is like a lifelong dream and this is something that, in Flesh and Blood's case, James, I know, has poured seven-plus years of his life into making this the best possible product he can do. And that's the kind of thing, like, I, I understand, right? We started a business, and, like, it would take a lot to get us to tap out. <laughs> like uh, I uh, haven't seen what it would take yet. I, we, we went to dar <laughs> very dark depths to, to we'll not talk about it out. one time in the book. In the book. Yeah. Uh, but, the memoir. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, I'm just going to take so, a little... Anyways, they, they convinced me that like they, they have a shot at actually doing this thing, honestly, and I truly believe that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be uh, you know, spending so much time looking at it and telling people we think it's a game to invest in. But it's a little chicken and egg scenario, right? Because if a lot of people think, ah, I don't want to get into it because it'll probably go away, then not enough people get into it and it doesn't have enough support. And we'll see. Um, let, let's walk through. Uh, you're giving me, giving yeah, me hold a little answer yeah, here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so I think uh, this game and this community uh, has a chance. And I think that they are willing to invest in the long term. And so we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think with any game, um, if you have a company like Asmodee, who owns Fantasy Flight, uh, who can't make a game stick around uh, in the various games we've seen go away over there, even Destiny, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if, if that company of that magnitude can't make a collectible card game work, uh, it's hard. Did they? Yeah. I mean, they made a lot of mistakes, but I'm saying they yeah. are, they have a lot of resources and people yeah. and still aren't pulling it off, so what does a small company have to do? But the difference is Legend Story Studio makes flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So I think part of the problem with something like Asmodee is that it's a lot of people doing a lot of jobs for a lot of different games. It's a line item on a spreadsheet is what it is. And so that's where this is like, if a game can be successful, Seeing a game like this be successful is what, for me personally, would bring me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. right? Same like with Sky Terror. Yeah. You want it's that like to be successful these too. are games that a lot of times would get overlooked that people wouldn't give it a second shot to. And honestly, when you play them, um, there is something there, right? It's like there's a, a clear vision, a passion behind the idea. And the world is developed. Like they have the actual like sheets on what is Wraith, what's happening in mm -hmm. the world, and we're going to get to explore that. So the whole thing is fleshed out, not to make too much of a pun there. Um, a couple of people saying, uh, looks like there's a lot of text on the cards. Did you, how did you feel about the general complexity of play, given the, the text? They're, uh, they're using the, the space on the cards. Um, there's a lot of text. But I think the biggest thing is that there's not a lot of text on the cards that stay in play. 
it just resolves in that. You read it, you resolve it, and you move on to the next Yeah, thing. and as a card yeah. game, like, I'm okay with reading. We've been doing the throwbacks. The worst is when there's a paragraph Got of a text reader. that has three or four effects in it that are continuous. And it sits there. And it's like, all your elves get plus one health. All your dwarves get plus two damage for every retaliate that they have. And your then you have a different card that resources. says, all your dwarves get retaliate one. So then it's like this card says retaliate one, I have to remember, and then I have to remember that this card on the third paragraph references that every retaliate one also gets this thing, and that it's just like a lot to manage, but this is like a, any of the complex card I play, it resolves and it goes away. Yeah, I like that. Galactic Trendsetter, you've inspired me to crack open a Honey Man 33 Crowler. Well, enjoy that. Cheers to you. Uh, and I wanted to say, name of Space Trash Hero Starter Bundle is now sold out on our site. That's good news. I'm hey, happy to hear that. Hey, high five. Pew. Any idea when they're back in? You guys know how to move product, lol. Uh, yeah, they'll be in super soon. We, we are getting more in actively right Sign now. Sign up on the wait list. Uh, you're going to notice it might be as soon as tomorrow, but no promises. Uh, we're working as, as hard as we can to, to keep getting those in. Chris Ainsworth, Stephen, when you come to deliver my order in California, I'll share some amazing West Coast IPAs with you. I have no doubt. Hey, they have the really good beer on the West Coast. Have oh, you? Of course. Did I tell you I like going to Stone Brewery? Yes, you did. Their Another beers street. are good. Their beers at the brewery were insane. And also, the facility was obnoxious. It was one of the coolest. Daniel and I went. Yeah. I, I, my brother used to you live in the LA. old U-Haul journey. Was that what that was? Different trip. That's a he funny owed me. Trip. He owed me for the U-Haul journey. Uh, but ultimately, we went out there, and it was just like, we. he has several kids. So it was his wife's treat. So to he be really like, wants to be drinking. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, the wife gifted him basically a day where we just got to drive down to San Diego. It, it's not quite San Diego, and go to Stone. Um, and it was just like, we spent the day at the brewery, we had lunch, we had drinks all afternoon, and it was like, it, and it's like the weather there is amazing. Oh yeah, of course. It was, it was great. Californians, you guys never have to deal with anything bad when it comes to the weather, uh, which I envy. But I also think that our struggle against the weather constantly builds character here in Oklahoma. So uh, take it or leave it. Evan Gassman says, I'm not usually into CCGs. I wanted to like Star Wars Destiny despite its collectible nature, but the need to store awkward dice kept me away. I'm willing to give this one a try. It looks fun. Well, that's good, Evan. It's worth a shot. I mean, once we have those Ira in stock, you can get two of those for free plus shipping. Uh, <laughs> Eclectic Campbell. Yeah, Less talking, great... more packy. Yeah, okay. that's right. I'm going to skip a bunch of comments. I'm sorry, guys. I will, I will maybe have to revisit those. All right, let's go in. Okay, so here's how the pack presented. A yeah, weapon me, can, on top. Can I read this note that I have about these packs? Sure. This is really clever. And I found this on a comment on a YouTube video months ago, and I just I didn't recognize it at first. Uh, so basically, the first four cards are going to be generic commons. That's the back card. This is the back card. And what does the back card tell me? So we'll get there. The first four cards are generic commons. Okay, hold on. I'll go there. All right. So you're going to have four generic commons. Like, what's the first one here? Slogism. That's red. red. Okay. So these are cards that can be used by anybody. Um, and after those four, you should run into an equipment card. Okay. And these should say C on the bottom. Wounded Bull says C on the bottom. It's red. Sink Below also says C on the bottom. And Regurgitating Slog says C on the bottom. That's correct. Then you have an equipment card. Okay. What's the name of this? So hold on. Let me, we'll do it in order. So first was the four commons. Then I have the Iron Rot Plate. All right. So obviously these are all cards that can be used. And if you look, the plate has generic equipment. So anybody can use that on, the, on their chest. Okay. So I have how many equipments? One? Yep. Then you have a rare. Okay, which the is rare, where you're at now. Yeah, R is Potion of Strength. Looks like a Shambong. Um, I had that in a deck. Did I didn't you? have that version necessarily. Uh, it's a three resource, zero cost. Destroy it, gets plus two uh, to your next attack, and go again. So I've seen a potion that gives plus two to the next attack. I've seen a potion that gives you two resources. I've seen a potion that gives you two actions. What's crazy about this is that this is generic action. The one I had is an item I had to spend an action to play. This is play it, and you can immediately use it. Well, no, it's action. Oh, yeah, 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 you can. You can play it for free, and then you can spend action. That's a really good no, card. No, you can't. No, you can't, because you got to, it's a, it's an action. So any action you have to spend to play, uh, and okay. then you can trigger was, the action. I got you. Um, so then the next slot is going to be your foil. Steel Blade Shunt. Is it foil? Nope. I no. missed it. Is it rare? What Wait, is it? What is this? It's an R. But there's two rares. There's two rare slots. There's two rares. Okay. So one of those might be a super rare. Steel Blade. Done. Yeah. And then uh, you get your foil slot, which could either be a special rare, a majestic card, fable, etc. Beautiful. The card. foil slots are all rainbow foil, other than the equipment cards, which are cold foil, like those promos that we have. Yeah. Boy, these are nice. Yeah. Stonewall confidence in honor of Uzak. 
and I love the templating around the outside of all these cards is actually the, uh, great. filigree, as you might say. You could say that. Um, and then this is what's really cool. So then you're going to get uh, the last set of commons, which is what's left, okay. are all class-based. So they should all be of the oh. same class. Is that right? So I've got... Or are they different classes? They're different. So that's all class-based cards. I've got brute. Oh, so these are all classes. So I've got two brute cards, two guardian cards, two ninja cards, and a warrior card. So you basically have four generic commons, a generic piece of plate. Then you get the, the was the seven? Yeah, so there were seven commons. Seven class-based commons. Class-based commons. Then you get two rares. One of these is probably a super rare, and a foil. So this is where your like legendary would come in. Cool. Or your cold foil weapon. Um, and then Majestics can also be in the rare slots over here. So that's just the breakdown Great. of how a Easy. pack is laid out. So okay, gonna, and then I've got the one, and this is like a token card that is included in every And what's team. on the back side of that? So Bravo. it's the young version of Bravo. So like if you were playing Seal the Draft, these are the characters you would have to choose okay, from. And the starting okay, weapons okay. that you could have to choose from. Oh, this, I heard that the packs were built for Sealed. You have young Bravo, Jonathan, you can pull up? Yeah, you got them up already. Check out the outside, the filigree as said of that card. That is absolutely gorgeous. Let me see it. Oh yeah, I love is that. Is that what your young Bravo look like? Yeah, isn't that great? You the like colors anything? and stuff. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna say cards that are like notable to me as I go. So like I got a barraging Bronhide Blue. We've seen that before. Regurgitating Slug. Sounds like a. Wow, this is cool. So regurgitating slug yellow, it's a two cost. Table, table. Table. I want to see it. Uh, as initial cost to play regurgitating slug, you can banish a card named slogism from your graveyard. So if you pl use a slogism, you can banish it. Uh, if you do, it gains dominate. So it's, a, it's an attack. Cool. With potentially dominate, and it actually gets a slogism from here to your banished. At the banish at the start of your turn, it comes back to your hand. Does it really? I Are you so. sure about that? Because the, the banished effect that I was referencing specifically said at the end of the turn, get it back. Oh. I think it's just like an area that can be utilized. So you just ways. get rid of it. So you basically get rid of it permanently to gain dominance. As now, long as you played Slogism, you can activate that card. So and it's, it's a late game card. It's possible that you could like have things to manipulate this pile. It is possible. There are things that could do banish stuff. It's not removed from game. No. It's just a totally different, it's like, eh. Yeah. Uh, then that we got noise. Scar from a Scar Red. We've seen that before. Um, sink Below Blue. You can put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck if you do. Draw a card. I love zero. Sink Below. That's a, that's a, apparently, this is like one of the, the most common cards included in a deck because it allows you to filter through yeah, you know, it makes to get sense. the cards you card, need. Card game things. And you get two defense uh, on the reaction. Bark Bone Strapping. Mm -hmm. Is that the thing you had? I used that on the first game, I believe, yes. And then uh, now under the rares, we get Drone of Brutality Red. Cost two, pr generates one resource. It's a six attack. If Drone of Brutality would be put into your graveyard from anywhere, instead put it on the bottom of your deck. Mm. That's pretty Very sweet. Nice. Then a Blessing of Deliverance Red. I had actually had this in my deck, in one of my decks. It has go again. Uh, when Blessing of Deliverance enters the arena, if you have a card in your pitch with cost three or greater, draw a card. Very nice. At the beginning of your good. action phase, destroy it, uh, reveal the top three cards of your deck, gain a health for each card revealed this way that costs three or greater. Very nice. Uh, somebody said, what were you saying there? St everyone's freaking out. Bang Ring's like on it. Scar Red is premium. You got Scar for Scar Red? Oh, yeah. No. Oh. Premium. What's premium? Premium mean? probably just means it's it, people want it. It's like a really good card. Maybe a lot of people play it. Is that what premium means? Yeah, it's, it's also it's also kind of pink. Yeah, that's not what premium is. premium means. Uh, then the foil is a common demolition crew red. Demolition crew. Oh my gosh, I love that art. Generic as initial cost to play reveal card. There's a lot of cards in these packs. Is this more than normal? Is it, this yeah, it, it, it's like a fifteen, th three, four, five, six. sixteen cards. That's a lot. So, like, a lot of collectible games will be 11. Yeah, 11 So there's only 12. 24 packs in a box. I feel like I grew up with, like, two cards in a pack. But, uh, you know, it's a $4 pack for 15, 16 cards. That's not bad. Uh, Back in my then, day when the packs were walking uphill and downhill. That's right. In the snow. No rares, ever. Uh, and I got the same thing, right? So two, 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 one, and then a token, which is the 
Reinar Reckless Rampage. And the Kadachi. Um, and the okay, Kadachi. so it's different because mine had uh, Young Bravo on the back. So Yeah, you just never know what that's going to be. Mmm. The sound. Cool Seismic Surge token. Okay, so you lead with the token. Then you get the old. Technically, is it the token's the back thing, right? Yeah, but it's. I always. I guess maybe it's how I open mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you always open like this, so it's the first thing you see is the token, right? Yeah. I could be backwards, though, you know? Unmovable, Demolition Crew, Raging Onslaught, Brawling, uh, Barraging Bronhide, Breaking Scales. So then we've got what? These are all the commons? Oh, this is the equipment. So there's the equipment slot. I'm just trying to figure this out, right? So four commons, equipment slot, and then two rare slots. Yep. Staunch response, overpower. And then a foil slot, biting blade. That's a cool looking foil. And then all of your guardian, open the center, driving blade. Love this, love this art. So I'm gonna much. check something, because you have that staunch response. I want to see if the one in the starter was a rare. No, there's still more confidence too, just to remind me. Buckling Blow, Awakening Bellow, Surging Strike. That's right. So the starter has a rare staunch response in it. Oh, okay. I didn't know this. I wasn't looking at the rarities when we were playing at all. Very, very nice. All right, token. All right. Equipment. Rares. And this is what happens is eventually you start just looking at the you know all these commons quickly. Like those are two we've seen. Uh, Nimbleism, yellow. The next attack card you card action. The next attack action card with a cost one or less you play this turn against plus two attack. You go again. Mm. That's good for ninjas. And pummel. Yeah. Then I got that Goliath gauntlet, which is good. Got a fluster fist. Oh cool. So you, yeah, equipment, right, right, right. Yep. Uh, fluster fist is good. Fluster is great art. That red fluster fist. Yeah. Again, the the outside like border. Also so got good. blackout kick. So this is the combo stuff. If rising knee thrust was the last card, it gets plus three, um, and it only costs one. So Feels like ninja five stuff. For one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is super cool. Check this out. It's a foil rare, steel blade shunt. Oh, to remind you of that uh, time. Steel blade that shunt I, uh, yellow. It looks you. great foil too. Look at this. It's just oof. Yeah, it's a good background for foiling. Yeah, and oh then of course gosh, we get the right. class cards. The right light, you guys. Let's get in here. Woo! Why are shiny things so good? That's why gold still has value. Check this out. Katsu. Talk to Ron about that one. Bravo. Oh. So it's some combination of a, wep a weapon and a young but, but character. This is two young characters. Yeah. So That's not even a weapon. So I would imagine maybe there's double-sided weapons in there. I assume. And I, so like if you're opening six packs, right? You're going to get a hero and you're going to get a weapon. Um, and that's how they basically decide to do that is interesting. Lion Day saying that we should show off an Iron Deck when we get the chance. We should. We just don't have any. Sold out. This one's the Romping Club. Just so you're aware, here's Wonder. what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to keep these six packs stacked. You want to make a deck out of them when we come back? When we come back on Tuesday, I think we should make a deck out of it. All right, boom. We got the Merchant's Hood, which I think is going to be a forever good. Eclectic says, all right, I'm regretting not tacking on some boosters with my starter purchase. Blackout. Rare, rare. Well, if you get the bundle, the booster bundle is free shipping, so you don't really lose anything. Look at this. A nice foil iron rock gauntlet. Oh, nice. That's the cold foil. The most generic thing on earth, but I kind of like it. It's like, I like celebrating the lesser uh, the lesser equipment. It looks gorgeous. Who, you know, who could, who could hate iron rot, really? I agree. Oh, that's a cool, nimble strike. I bet that Merchant's Hood gets played like crazy. Mm. I'll bet anybody. Hey, look, I got Hope Hope Merchant's Hood. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I think that's like a, such a common. You get yeah. a free hand. And then nice. I got a Time Snap Potion and a Steel Blade Shunt and then a Foil Leg, tra leg Tap. That's just a common. Are you going to be playing Ninja? I don't know. We're going to have to be doing some figuring out. Kinetic asking, how interchangeable are the weapon... Uh, in hero combos, are they kind of restrictive? They're entirely restrictive up front. So there's only one weapon for a particular class and only one hero in that class. So they have to be paired together. But my belief is that in future sets, we will get additional characters for the classes that currently exist. And then you can swap and swap 
as you want with your weapons. I don't know if that's true, but I assume that's true. They won't just keep making classes every booster release. Like, that's That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so this one I had the Harmonized Kadachi, but then I got a Quicken token on the other side. Ah. I hadn't seen, which is cool. Ooh, this is what I was talking about. The Cracked Bobble. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, so if you're drafting in this game, and you draft in such a way that you can't make a 30-card warrior deck or ninja deck or, or whatever it is, then you, you run the deck that you want, and the rest of your slots become cracked baubles. And all that they do is generate two resources. Pretty cool little mechanic to, to kind of balance things out. I love this Flock of the Feather Walkers yellow art. Isn't it beautiful? Iron Rot Helm looking great. Yeah, I got another Warriors Helm. Vault and break Old neck. Helm of Eisen's Peak. Look at this foil pummel, dude. That looks so awesome. Yeah, foils are worth worth their weight in gold. Now, are we gonna are you gonna build the deck and then try to foil it completely out? Nah, I'm so into that, man. Check this out. The rare staunch response is a seven. A seven defense. Yeah, it's staunch response. Staunch and red, uh, and then you can pay four extra to make it plus three. See, this is a cool. So you'll get to decide. Do you want? You could have nine staunch responses in your deck. Right? It's true. And you, I mean, you can imagine a deck that just doesn't doesn't take no, nothing from nobody. All the big defense cards. Yeah, Lion Day also saying it's looking like the next set will drop new weapons too. And Mr. Micah on Twitch saying, is that playmat standard or just for demo purposes? So these are two playmats. Um, I think they came in some organized play kits. We're actually going to see if we can get them out out to the world because that would be cool if they'd be willing to do that over at Legend Story. It seems like a, something that's very in demand. Reinar and Kodachi as the weapon, and then Demolition Crew, Slogism, Unmovable, Nimbleism, Standard, the Heart and Cross Strap, Standard, one of that. Barraging Beatdown, Last Ditch Effort, uh-oh, this seems important, what's an S? Super Rare? Super probably? Rare. All right. Super Rare. So it looks like it's Sand Sketched Plan. Super Rare for the Brutes, it's Reinar Specialization, I haven't seen this before. So you may only have it if you're running Reinar. I like that a lot. Search your deck for a card, put it into your hand, discard a random card, then shuffle your deck. If the discarded card is six or more, gain two action points. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Wow. That's great in Reinar. That's so good. We're building. We're building. Cool, man. I know who I'm running. Reinar. Uh, overpower. It's a three cost, give a weapon, plus two. And the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand this chain link. The attack gains plus two again. That's crazy. This is the cool card. Cranial Crush. Costs six. Mm. Crush. If Cranial Crush does four or more damage to a hero, they can't draw cards during their next action phase. No way. Isn't that, look at, look, also, look at the art. Bogus. She's very angry. It's mm -hmm. very, very good. Now, your action phase, so that's only cards that would draw you cards. That's not at the end of your turn. Does that make sense? It's so like I had cards that would, if you didn't defend or if you defended with a card, mm, I would draw a card. Less good than I wanted it to be. Less good, but still good. Check this out. It's a common. It's called Open the Center. It's yellow, but it's foil. And it's anytime you get foil lightning is when you're in the Foil money. lightning is where Zach wants to live. Yeah. Open the Center. Yeah, Lion D, that's a foil super rare. I think that's the only way that they come, right? Do super rares come in anything other than foil? Probably not. Oh, they do. Because I got another one. Is that an S? Is that what S means? Yeah. So you're telling me I got a super rare unfoil and a super rare foil I guess so. in the same pack? Are you kidding me? That seems good. Well, okay, flesh and blood. Don't Nick, mind if uh, I do. Seal the six packs and just go. I'm not sure exactly how draft works. Cranial Crush is also super rare, apparently. Is it good? That's the real question. Does it say S on the bottom? Sure does. Wow. Cool. Wow. We're collecting. I like having like a super rare and then the foil slot was also a super rare. That's pretty sweet. That's amazing. These are my cards. All right, last pack. Can't hate it already. That's a cool foil. It's a common, but it's a cool foil. Oh, it's gorgeous. Stroke of foresight. That's actually one of the more gorgeous foils I have yet to see. All right, I got Drone of Brutality. Cost two. It's yellow. If Drone Brutality would be put into the graveyard from anywhere instead, put it on the bottom of your deck. That's going to be a deck. How about some Raging Onslaughts? Helm of Eisen's Peak, why are you so beautiful? Oh, here's a card I really love um, called Snatch. Tell me this doesn't remind you of the spoils, right? 
That's a rogue card if you've ever seen Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So good. And if it hits, you draw a card. That's really Come good. Come on. It costs zero. It's so good. Generic action. And the old breakneck battery. Another rare there. Cartilage crush on the foil. And then some stone wall and some awakening bellows and a stroke of foresight. I'm seeing, the thing is like, you don't have to design that many cards if you have three variations of every card, which is pretty cool. For that, sure. That will allow you to keep the game tighter in terms of balance and rotation and whatnot. Eclectic says this art is ridiculous. Isn't it good? This is this razor reflex is red is like I love that art. I can't tell you. Yeah, I mean, so you basically every card you design you get three versions of. Um, that even a three hundred card set, right? It, I don't know if that card counts as three different cards. They don't necessarily do three. Some of them I don't think have all three variations mm. that I've seen. But it does, for deck building, you can run all three, three of, but all three of those variations. Hmm. So I can run three of the blue version, three of the red version, and three of the yellow version, uh, which is insane. That would really allow me to do a thing that I want to do to varying degrees of success, which is super cool. All right, well, hey, I think we've had a good intro here. I agree. I feel good. We played two games. We cracked some packs. We've got a sealed deck waiting to be built. Um, real quick... You guys have any last minute questions? Uh, any questions about Flesh and Blood before we go? We'll zoom out here and, uh, and actually Hang have out. a conversation with you here for a second. So we're while we're waiting on the questions to come in, we're going to be streaming next Tuesday and Wednesday, more Flesh and Blood. Yeah, join uh, us. Let's keep diving in. It's going to get silly. We're going to start deck building. We're going to start talking about concepts, deeper concepts about the game, ways to think about how to play. Um, Totally. We're still on our. We're still crawling. We're still toddlers in this one. Just little baby. It's gonna steps. take a while. I think this is a slow like to get there to get up to speed. It's gonna take us a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully it'll take us. I mean, a just year. to get like basic like. Hopefully it'll take us six years. Even when I feel comfortable enough to build a deck, yeah. it's gonna. That's what I'm gonna. I think it'll take me a week or two before I'm like ready to. Go, like you know what you're rogue. doing. Yeah. You're like I think I've got an idea. That'd it won't be, a be right, one. but I at least think I've got it right. That'd be really fun. Uh, so a lot of people saying uh, thanks for the stream, love the stream, etc. Thank you guys for being here. You make it possible and you make it fun. Uh, and then Kaya asking, do you know if there's looking at a digital component? I, you know, I don't know anything for sure, but I know that the mission statement of this company is to push against the digitalization of card games. Um, it literally was a response to Hearthstone and Magic going digital and, and that movement in this hobby. So I would be very, very surprised if that became a focus for Legend Story. I think, now, if they have to do it to survive because coronavirus is around for the next year and nobody feels comfortable getting out, that's a different story. But assuming that things can return to some level of normality, I would say that they are all in on the in-store, retail support, local game store environment push, uh, which is cool. Or if you don't have the game store element, just people getting together and playing somewhere. That seems to be definitely the focus. And they've got this Play Anywhere program. Mm -hmm. Now, I looked at this a little bit, and the basics are, if you're a person, you can host an event anywhere you want. Yeah, like you can host Invite it your, your friends at your room. house, yeah. whatever. Uh, have them wear masks or, you know, make sure that you've been around them for a couple of weeks and neither one of you are coughing in weird ways. I think most people are keeping very tight social circles. Yeah. So if your social circle plays, it allows you to host events. That's right. And so I think anyone anywhere can basically host these events and get the organized play kits and just have a little micro community. So look into that. We'll be diving into more of that kind of stuff on future streams. And Zach, I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you guys so much for uh, for being here. Uh, you have any any questions for you? No, Anything, uh... no. We'll uh, we'll be talking about CCGs in general on the podcast this week, so look out for that if you're unfamiliar. Definitely. It's called the Covenant Cast. You can find it on pretty much every platform. But we talk about our perspective as retailers and players uh, on everything going on in the industry. And so obviously, us diving into a CCG that's a that's some that's something a lot of sorry I didn't yeah, you kick can. you. A lot of people uh, hesitate about because collectability is more expensive. But there's a lot of good reasons for that. So we'll it's be talking about that. It's more expensive if you try to get it all. Yeah. It can also just be six packs every month and play a sealed tournament yeah. to be done. Right? Like this is a this is a sealed tournament. By it's the way, a sealed tournament. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a that's a fast it's stack of cards. Pretty cool. And just to go over the things you need to know in terms of uh, commerce, we've got the free Ira decks, the welcome decks. Those are meant to be played against each other. So a mirror match with those decks is a great way to learn the game. 
Those are currently out on our store, but we are getting more in as soon as possible. It could be as early as this week. I'll link to that. So the they, sh they should be around very soon. Join on the wait list if you want to get a notification about that. Also, the Hero uh, Starter Bundles, the Hero Decks, we've got those. Those are currently out. They're coming back in. The response has been amazing, so clearly there's some desire for flesh and blood in the States at least. Um, and then we've also got the bundle where you can get a set one box, a set two box. Both of those are 20% off standard kind of pricing convention. And then we also ship them for free. And we include two random foils from the cold foil spread of the eight weapons currently available in the game. We'll give you a set one cold foil and a set two cold foil. If you buy multiple bundles, we'll make sure you don't get doubled up in the same order on those promo cards. So if you buy three bundles, we'll make sure you get three different promos from set one, three different promos from set two. If you buy four bundles, you're guaranteed to get all four from set one, all four from set two, no dupes. If you buy five bundles, again, I will <laughs> come uh, to your house and kiss your children or whatever it is. Uh, that, now the barrier is five. That's, okay. that's low. Uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I won't travel to your house for five of the bundle, but you will get duped up at that point because the fifth box, the fifth bundle will necessarily include some dupes. And then uh, the subscription. This is the best subscription uh, potentially we've ever offered. I mean, we've got an exclusive promotional card that is only going to be available through our subscription service. Uh, so sign up for that. If you sign up for three boxes in that subscription, you'll get a play set of that promo card and you'll get free shipping on that subscription. And you can do that as long as you want. And if you ever don't want those boxes to come your way, then just cancel your sub. There's no contracts and no hidden fees, nothing weird. People in the chat will tell you, we got a lot of subscribers in the chat right now. If you're curious about it, ask a question. Uh, and then I'm sure there are subscribers out there that will tell you, it's, it's fine, it's great. Get into the game, let's go. Nothing weird there. And I think that's it. Have I marketed successfully? I think you did it. Is the value there? We okay. did it. Uh, if you haven't been following along, we're playing Arkham Horror tomorrow on stream instead of our Throwback Thursday. And then next week we'll have... Bonus for Arkham. That's right. Next week's Beautiful. Tuesday and Wednesday, Flesh and Blood, and a full week of stream Monday through Friday. So hopefully we'll see you there. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. It's been a pleasure. See you guys later.